Welcome back to the Decently Indecent podcast. I am joined here by one peg. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, so man. happy to have you on to chat for a little bit. I'm really happy to be here, man. Listen, uh, I wanted to ask you right out of the gates. Uh, you let your viewers pay a dollar to smash you in the head with ping pong balls yeah. while you're streaming. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. So this was, I don't even know why. Uh, so <laughs> another one of the guys that went to the range day when I last saw you was uh, yes. this, this dude, Zach. He goes by the name of Valiant. Um, he, he's like, dude, you have to do this. And I'm like, what am I, what do I have to do? And he's like, you got to get this ping pong robot. And then you set up these things, of software with like a smart plug <clears throat> and you set these timers or whatever. And like they pay and like, it turns it on and it'll just fire them at you. And I'm like, how hard does this thing shoot? And he's like, it's rated at 75 miles an hour. <laughs> and he's like, but you can't Come be on. a pussy. You have to turn it all the way up. I'm like, all right, all right, yep. And then so that's that's kind of when it started. And uh yeah, it they he didn't mention that the robot is like five hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, just a little ent buried entry there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So like that plus like the smart plugs and the software and everything, it was like six hundred dollar go like go in on it. And I'm like, man, I really hope people like hate me slash love me enough to be able to like use this thing. And uh yeah, there's like and like every day I'm picking up like 250 for fucking ping pong balls. So, like so you have to take 675 mile an hour ping pong ball shots to the Just head to break you even. even recoup your investment. Just to break right? even. Yeah. And every once in a while I'll catch one like to the side of my Adam's apple or something <laughs> and like the tender bits. Yeah. That's, well, that's always a good time. Yeah. You're like, oh. Yeah. That's pretty quick, dude. Like 75 no joke. I mean, I'm sure it's rated for that. It's, Maybe we're talking 60, 55, yeah, so you know. I'm it's like you, if you play okay. ping pong, it's a, it, like it's got side spin and like you turn the head of it and it like. <laughs> changes the trajectory and stuff, but it's like it 2.7 grams, like little hollow nothing. You wouldn't think it hurt, but then you get yes. hit. You get, and then you get hit in the ear with one and you're like, shit, you know, <laughs> son of a bit. And I imagine too, like the, the pain of being hit in the same spot repetitively. Oh, yeah. If that happens occasionally, like of, once you get a nice times, little welt and you hit it again, yeah, I get hit like on the tip of my scapula or whatever. And it mm. like, it just goes numb after like the 15th or 20th one, you know? And I have one Dude, I, and I have one that'll fire for like 60 seconds. 50, 50 bucks and it's like 60 seconds is just like rapid fire. Just pounding them straight. Just, just, yeah, just hitting me. And I'm like, is it oh, over dude. yet? Because goddamn, you know, but I made 50 bucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, dude, this is so great. Stupid. I mean, it, it, it is, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure your viewers love it. For those watching or listening, uh, uh, One Peggy, full-time streamer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how long you been doing this full-time? Uh, full-time is just over uh, f six years. Five? Okay, so you've been at it yeah. for a minute then. God damn, good for you. Yeah, 20, that's, that's, 2019, I went full time. Okay. Five, five years. So I went five years. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I'm. I was twenty eighteen October. So I'm just just a little more than you as far as full time doing like online bullshit. And I, yeah. I, I'm always interested or not interested, but I, I feel a connection with you in a way simply because we're both prehistoric in internet years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a boomer. We, I believe I read something it's, that said you're 38. I don't know if that's recent or not. No, or I am going to be 43 in May. Four. Okay, so that was old. God damn, old, you I'm need to old, update your website. I'm, a, I'm an peg. old man. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, that was something that like a fan of mine made. And okay. It, and like yeah, the website is a uh, onepegsucks.com. I was going to ask you because that, that was why the it's joke. Called onepegsucks.com. Yeah, okay. Do you remember the band Primus? Of course. Okay. Love so that Primus's band. website Best was of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Primus's yeah. website was Primus sucks. And I always thought that was hilarious because they never took themselves mm -hmm. seriously. And I was like, well, yes. that's exactly like my whole shtick. Like, you know, that's <laughs> perfect. So yeah, the domain was available and we just, we grabbed it. But I haven't, I haven't looked, dude, I haven't even looked at that thing in three years probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, forgot we're, it we're like, you know, the social media guys, we don't rely on our website yeah. to do things. Yeah, no. uh, I have a, you know, I have like a one page where you can go to leonlush.com and it's like, hey, check out my socials basically. But that's, <laughs> Look that's at my links. Yeah. yeah. Not like hosting courses or whatever. So that's great. So that makes me feel even better because now I'm like just a young buck. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a young man. Yeah. Th uh, 38, spring chicken, fucking grandpa one peg yep, over here. Yep, yep. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I got my But it's great because we, we really come from a different generation, uh, you know, of people that are, whatever you call it, I guess, making content in some capacity and able to do that for a living. I know for me personally, yeah. and I'm curious, I'm curious to hear your insight on this, but you know, over the years I've been doing this the past five or six years full time, people from my generation that I grew up with, went to school with, like aunts and uncles, people a little bit older, like 
people still don't really understand it. They don't get it. And there's yeah. there were so many jobs on the floor. Like, wait, you you can make money doing that? Wait, what? So what do you? What's your other job? I'm like, no, this is this is what I do. And it's like it's just uh, there's this massive disconnect. And 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 then there's some people like us that are a little bit you know, skew on the older side of the generation that really embraced this online thing. Uh, And it's been incredible. But what's your experience been like explaining to people, family members, cousins, like whatever, like what you do? So it's, it's funny because, so when I was, when I was much younger, um, back in the days when like Mario brothers was new, um, baby, (laughs) yeah. My, I, isn't it funny to be to be able to say that you were around when Mario Bros. Yeah, or was like new? or like, dude, I played World of Warcraft on its first day. Like that shit Same. is weird because of Same. how old that game is. And I'm like, God damn, I'm a dinosaur. It was two thousand, right? Two thousand one. Yeah, it's like it's like 50, 20, 20 something years ago. Yeah. Like yeah. a long long time. Um yeah. but yeah, so uh my mom, when I when I first started playing video games, I was like six years old at NES you know, Nintendo entertainment system, super Mario brothers, duck hunt, you know, that whole thing, uh, legend of Zelda too. uh, the yep. gold cartridge and like the memory card would die and like, you'd lose your save file and like all that garbage. Um, it was always an issue growing up. And then like through my twenties and stuff, I just played video games all the time. And there was no like live streaming. YouTube didn't exist yet. You know, all that stuff. It was just like, you're addicted to video games and like, you're never going to do anything with that. And then it's like, and then I had two, like, like two, two full on like businesses. I owned a painting company. I was a financial planner for almost 11 years. And then, um, I got depressed and started like, just kind of looking at content stuff as a, like an escape. And as it started, is tradition. And as is tradition. Cycle of depression. Yeah, yeah. The cycle of depression. And then, uh, <laughs> then I ended up making like an okay amount of money and switched. And the, the funniest thing was like two or three years into being full time and being able to like, you know, consistently pay my bills uh, and support mm-hmm. my family and everything off of what I was doing for a living. I ended up getting a message one day from my mom. Like she sent me a text message. She was like, I was so wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I didn't think you'd ever be able to do anything with video games. And here you yeah. are. And it's like, yeah, I'm just too old now. You know? <laughs> it's, yeah. It was Dude, it. It's funny because it really was, it, you know, nobody could have, predicted i think back when we were younger and i I went through the same thing where you know i had a nintendo i was addicted to mario brothers i was playing mario 3 with then the n64 came along and i'm like getting 120 stars and super mario 64 like in the first week and just sneaking over my friend's house to play because my parents were concerned the whole nine yards and uh you know there's that you know there's definitely a level of legitimacy to that, oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But it is interesting that our generation, you know, went through that and then grew up and all of a sudden it's like, wow, people are streaming and making money doing it. And there's people, you know, the, the hardest thing to tell people that are older is that there's a generation of kids that enjoy watching other people play video games. That is very yeah. hard for people my, to My to grandfather's digest. generation, he was like, he, he, yeah. he passed away a couple of years ago at 84. Mm. And uh, he was like, you play video games like online, like in, like in other people watch you do this. Like, yeah. And you make money from that. Yeah. How like, like good. Like, yeah, I'm like making about six figures a year. And he's like, how? Like it just blew his mind. Because <laughs> like he never made he never had a year where he made more than like I grew up there poor he never had a year where he made more than like twenty five thirty thousand dollars you know sure. like self employed yeah, or whatever but he not uncommon farmer. for it's really a farmer land rich cash poor you know yeah. and um, yep. to him it was like you're you're making how much like he it was it was just funny he was like well as long as you're happy <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the, hey yeah. That, that's a classic grandpa thing to yeah, say absolutely we love that yeah yeah and uh, so. So that's incredible. So six years and what do you, how do you, like, how is the landscape? You know, I, I remember 2017 era. Like I, so when I, I was started, I, I've been doing YouTube forever, 20, 2008 with music covers, but it wasn't until I saw your, 2015, I saw your like making of Leon Lush video from like, years no, the, ago. Yeah, 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 the old school, yeah, just yeah, like old school man, Leon I, Lush, like with his, with his acoustic guitar. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I went to be through Jack a lot Johnson. of, a lot of iterations of what I was and identity and what I was trying to do before kind of, you know, landing on my feet where I am now, which is basically like, Hey, let's just try and be more myself and just talk about things. And it turns out I have a knack for, you know, just kind of critical commentary essentially and making funny little one-liners and jokes about stupid shit going on. Yep. But there was a lot that led up to that. But 
I guess what I'm trying to say is when I started coming back to YouTube uh, in 2015, 16 and taking it seriously, once I had left the band I was in for years and I wasn't really doing much online, so, you know, streaming was still relatively like n still pretty new at that point. I was, it had been around, but it wasn't like you weren't seeing deals and stuff like you see today. And then no. we saw, I want to say 2016, 17, the Fortnite explosion happened. When Ninja and I think that really took subs and all that in the Twitch Prime. Yeah, that, and... I think that took streaming to another level. I really yeah. think, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't super involved in in the community at that time. I was just watching it from afar while I was doing more YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. But the whole like the Fortnite, the Ninja thing really took it mainstream in the way that like all of a sudden you had Drake playing with Fortnite. A lot of these big celebrities started to recognize it as this thing that was legitimate. There was money flowing into it. Yep. And college football players know, were talking about playing like Fortnite in their free right. time. So they so there was already people that had communities that were making money and making a living, mm -hmm. but I don't think there was a lot of streamers that had reached kind of like online celebrity status really. Yeah, no until, one was getting a deal with Adidas back then. You know, until, until, until like Ninja hit. A hundred percent. And so I'm curious to your view as someone who's been in it, you know, since those years, yeah. you know, late, late 20 teens, seeing the explosion of it, the, the ninjas come out of it, kind of these, these celebrities. And then obviously there's just thousands of people that aren't household names, but are making a living doing it. Yeah. And I think there was a, there was an inflection point almost where the, it, it kind of, it was like video game streaming was the shit and then it had its moment and it kind of tapered off and has kind of come back down and found a new normal now. Yeah. What does that look like to you as far as like where streaming is at now from the standpoint of like, pe like people watching video games and where it's going versus obviously the other side of streaming, which is like the just chatting, the IRL stuff. Like how does, yeah, how does that look it, like from your perspective? It, it's it dude, it, it is like ever expanding. And, and I yeah. think, and the, you know, it's, it's funny because this reminds me a little bit of like the conversation that you had in Mudahar, uh, yep. where it was talking about like how everybody's just trying to go for that, like larger and larger shock value. And mm -hmm. all I could think about was like ratings that like Howard Stern got in the nineties because of yep. like the shit he would say. And then it's kind of like now every like 20 year old or whatever is trying to like do that to like one up yeah. the guy that came before them so that they can get like the shock value, like views, um, mm -hmm. to the chagrin of many and like the detriment of like everyone around them. Um, <laughs> yeah, but the, yes, the, the thing, yes. the thing that, the thing that, um, I think really made me go like, huh, was back in like 2017, 2018, uh, disguised toast did a video where he showed how much money, like he went through like step by step, like in categorical form for like, this is how much money I typically make when I play Twitch ads on my stream for the viewers that I have. And this is how much money I make from this and from that. And like, that went like mega viral and the people that watched that were like, holy shit, like streamers make fucking money. Like yeah. they were just, you know, no one realizes until they actually like look at it that somebody like landmark Tony with 7,000 viewers on average is probably clearing like two and a half, $3 million a year That's sleeping. Insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's wild. And I used to talk about money for a living. So like none of this like phases me. The other, the other right. thing that I've noticed is especially in like the entertainment world, like no one ever really talks about the kind of money that they earn. And it's almost like taboo. And in, uh, my, in traditional like Hollywood type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it, like, and we're just an extension of, of entertainment. I mean, I don't live in LA, or anything, you know, but it, we're it's just, just been democratized. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the stigma is kind of still there. And in my case, it's just like, if people want to know how much I make, it's just like, Oh, well, uh, last month I made $7,200 from Twitch. I got to look at the other stuff. You really want to know? Like, I don't care. You know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't bother me. Um, and that, that I think was kind of like the inflection point was like 17 to 18 when people started getting like real famous, um, yep. and kind of really blew up, um, beginning of 18 when Ninja hit like the hundred thousand subs and everything was when stuff went wild. And that's when I started streaming was around then, not because of him, but it was just kind of like, you know, that's when it started happening. And then, and then COVID hit and in 2020, everybody started fucking streaming and everybody started watching streamers. And you look Dude, at the numbers so and it like Twitch's viewership jumped like 30% that year. It was insane. Yeah. And now it's obviously come back down again. Right. So, um, yes. cause people went that's, back to work and like, people yeah. actually have to go to work yeah, and yeah. not just sit on the couch all day. Yeah. I right? can't just stay home, you know, or like the boss won't let me is probably more like what happened. But. Yeah. COVID was such an interesting time because, you know, I, I came from years as a musician, which was, uh, you know, supplementing is what I was trying to do. Yeah. But my main, you know, income was through uh, the restaurant industry. 
decade plus. Mine was construction. Um, as, as I was gigging, bartending, serving, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I left that in late 2018 when I started full time. And then, and then COVID hit. And all of a sudden, as somebody who stayed at home and made content and put it online for people to watch, my career got better. And COVID helped it because all of a sudden everyone's at home. And well, that's what I all meant. Of my, all of my, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It was actually PAX East, right? PAX East, right like, before we all got locked it down. It was like the month before shit locked yeah, like down. They were like, I, yeah, I guess we'll have hand sanitizer like at the venue. Right. They were like a couple people yeah. were wearing face masks, like yeah. mostly they Asian were like, people. What are you, we were what like, what well, are you that's doing? Normal <laughs> Asians wear face masks anyways a lot. Yeah. And we were like, I mean, I'm not going to touch the escalator We were all joking about it. Yeah. Sorry, dude. dude it, ADHD moment. I'm like talking over you. I got to stop. No, 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 no. It's fine. I get excited about these things too. These little <laughs> nostalgia moments because yeah, yeah, yeah. that was, I remember that it was fu- like, and there I was, was such a murmurs. fan of yours, by the way, even then <laughs> I really was like, I was like, God bless you. Cause, cause yeah. uh, Kyle batty, you know, he's yes. like, he was like, he's like, yeah, I should text Leon. He'll come out of the bar. And I'm like, wait, Leon lush. And he was like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I fucking love that guy. Like, Oh yeah. And then Good it, old know, Leon, yeah. And then fucking, me trying to play it cool, I was like, "All right, you're six four, I'm six four, like, <laughs> <laughs> a couple like of tall dudes. Yeah, yeah, we're just a couple yeah. of tall dudes having a beer. By the way, I really like your YouTube videos, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> dude, that was fun. So that was that's right in my neck of the woods. It's one of the few conventions I've been to, which is why I went. And yeah, that was, I was glad to meet you there, and I was glad to go because after that, it was boom, bang, everything shut down, yeah. and we were fucking couldn't even get a haircut for a fucking year. So yeah. Yeah, that was wild. But house. the point I was trying to make is that like every you know, it was a, such an interesting time because all of the sudden everybody with a real job, quote unquote, was getting eviscerated mm-hmm. and all of these clowns sitting at home making content online were th- were th- flourishing and thriving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was a very and, and nobody could have predicted that. Like no. you know what I mean? And I I just felt really bad because a lot of my friends, obviously I've made so many friends in the restaurant industry for so many years, were in such a tough position because you know, restaurants were shutting down. It's like yeah, everyone's letting go of half of the staff because no one's coming in. It was just yeah. such a difficult time. So I was so, you know, I look back at that period of time with so much gratitude that I was, you know, and it's nothing but shit luck and timing. Like it, the fact that I, you know, it could have, I could have still been working in the restaurant if I didn't have two videos in 2018 that popped and I would have been in a whole different area now. And that so much yep. of life is just luck and timing but it comes down to from you know outside of those two factors is just you know having an intention of where you want to be trying to do something and then repetitions over time and i was just fortunate enough to get to a place where i would became full time in covid you know helped my career in some backwards kind of way while the world was getting fucking demolished yeah, so yeah. such a it was such an interesting time but I don't even know how we got on that topic. I think I was just thinking of the, oh, that, that was the beginning of, st- like, the, and you were talking about how the streaming blew up, too, and yeah. how COVID, as yeah. streamers, yeah. all of a sudden, everybody's like, hey, I, I'm not going into work. I'm just sitting at home. Let me try streaming, right? Yeah. But you had started before that, before COVID a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I was, I started uh, February 1st of 2018, uh, and then uh, April Fool's Day 2019, I went, uh, decided I was quitting my job going full-time. Uh, April Fool's. I, I kept, uh. Yeah, it was like the joke for a while. It was like it was like the longest running April Fool's joke. It's it's so funny that I actually have this thing sitting next to me, but I actually have like <laughs> the financial planner, right? I kept a ledger yes. of like uh, all of my uh, money in, money out, like whatever I was earning and from like what source. And then I was like, okay, so if I can do three straight months of paying my bills just off of content creation, like YouTube and Twitch, you're gonna go for it. Then I'll then I'll quit. And that happened yeah. uh, m- March 31st or whatever was was when I now, get poetry. How is that? Let me, yeah. I don't want to assume here. Uh, I, I think I know you, you have some kids. I have three. Yeah. Three kids mm-hmm. married. Wife? I'm, I'm married. Yeah. Married is okay. So, so not, I won't, I won't dig into the details, but how was that? Uh, the conversation. How, how was it convincing your wife that you were going to quit your financial <laughs> advisement job to yeah. play video games? <clears throat> so um, <laughs> like I had said, there, there's, there's a, there's a story behind all of it, but I, like everything else, right. Um, there was there was a period of depression prior to any of my my content creation stuff that I had started doing. So like pretty bad, tough to get out of bed type of depression. Like re- yeah. yeah, like and it was around it was around the financial planning work because I worked for Just the job you were doing. Yeah, okay. for the for the decade that I spent doing it, I worked for three of the largest financial planning firms in the country. Um, okay. And those firms, like whenever it comes to that kind of stuff, the scoreboard is literally money. Like. How much assets under management do you have? How much of how much commissions did you earn in a given month, et cetera, et cetera, right? So yep. it, it came down to 
uh, that scoreboard. And, and I was good at my job. Like we were getting free trips and shit. Like the last, the last one before I left was like, we got to go to Hawaii and stay at like a four seasons for a week on, on the company dime, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so it was nice. Um, but while I was there, a guy that was like ranked fifth in the country in the company, uh, as a manager. So he had like a team of like 30 dudes under him in Manhattan. So he's making like three or 4 million a year just off of like, you know, what other guys in the company were doing for him or under him. Uh, certainly he looked at me and was like, you would be made, you should be have made like double the amount of money by now, if you were going to do right by her and pointed at my wife, like right in front of me and in front of like a bunch of my peers. And I was just, dickhead. Oh, huge douche. And <laughs> I was just, fuck? and I was like, you know, when I grow up, I hope I'm half of as big of an asshole as you. Uh, I actually said it right out loud to his face and like everybody else kind of like snickered and laughed and whatever. And I, yeah. and I walked and then I, I had to have a conversation with the guy that like ran the region because I was like, what the fuck is with this guy? Um, and then talk to the dude that like ran my office. It was like, I don't know what his issue is. And I really don't understand the attitude. Like, I didn't think that like, that was how I was supposed to be running my business. It's not supposed to be about the money. It's supposed to be like doing right by folks. Like that was why I got started doing this to begin with. And his only response to me was like, oh yeah, that guy mentors me. I like him a lot. And then I was like, okay, I understand how the business works now. Like, like this is really what you value. You don't give a fuck about whatever or not. I, like I pull the wool over somebody else's eyes as long as it's underneath like legal compliance. No one gives a shit. And that, that tore me up. Cause then I started second guessing like the last 10 years of my life and whether or not I had actually been like recommending the right shit. Or if I was just listening to a guy tell me what to sell. To, um, to better their bottom line. Basically. Exactly. So yeah. I got in the car, I it, like for months I would get in the car and I would like drive around my block for like an hour. And then I would pull into my driveway and like suit and tie the whole thing, walk, walk right inside and just be like, fuck it. I'm not going to do it. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I had no confidence that I was doing right by people anymore. Yeah. It, it takes, it's <clears throat> funny. So I, I, I spent a year in sales my first year out of college and you know, I'm an extroverted guy. I have a good personality for it, but there is this innate part of you that either can do it, or I should say there's this innate part of someone's DNA, I think, that is just you're born with it or you're not. Mm -hmm. And some people are just killers and they care nothing except about how, like, how much money they can make, how they can gain off of the backs of other people. It doesn't matter what the game is. The best entrepreneurs in the world are probably like this. But there's other people that have the DNA where you can you can be good. I was good at sales, but it made me so fucking miserable because I I just felt like every single day I was waking up to try and kind of best somebody or like pull the, like the products we were selling were good products, but it was like it was all about like why my products better and like all these things yeah. and you're, and then your manager the only thing you care about is making money and you pretend you have to pretend like you care about the business of this person and doing better by them. But really that's not what matters. And the company doesn't care about that. Nope. They tell you they do, but they don't, they only care about the numbers and the money. Yep. And what I've learned growing up and you went through this at your financial planning job and you had that, I guess, eye opening moment mm -hmm. at that conference with that dude. And what I've, this is kind of a nihilistic view, but what I've really come to, to believe as, you know, an adult going on 40 in a couple of years is that almost every institution that runs the world is, is kind of governed that way. Oh yeah. No people's best interest does not matter at all. No, it's only a mirage. Yes. And people will try to make you believe that you matter. Yes. But the only thing, when, when it comes down to it, when the pressure's on, the only thing that matters is profitability. Absolutely. And that is true for government. That yep. is true for Silicon Valley. That is true for all of the biggest companies in the world, the FDA, the government institutions that are explicitly supposed to protect the interest of United States citizens is they don't care about no. you. No, not at all. <laughs> they, do not, no. they do not care about no. you at all. They care about winning. That's it. They care about winning. winning. They care about profit. Even if it's yep. a government subsidized thing. Yep. That, yeah. It's, it's just, I've, I've really. They're out for number one, man. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So. In, in, in investors in are the learning, same way. I, I mean, it, like, that's why everybody wants to know what's on the K1 every time that they go to make an investment. Well, most people are financial investors. So they want to look at like what the financial history is, what kind of profitability do you have? And it's an impossible goal, you know, to assume yes. that a company is going to be every quarter, they're going to make more than they made the last quarter at a higher rate than they made it last quarter. 
That's like it, what's so crazy. It's crazy. Like they're like investors yeah. and everyone, they expect there just to be unlimited growth and yeah. like forever. It's impossible. For, in perpetuity. Yeah. Like, and if you're having, you know, red months and you're not reaching targets, yep. all of a sudden you're a bad company, there's stock sell-offs and it's like, it's so, so, so you have to imagine that when there's so much money at stake and there's so many incentives for businesses to make sure that those K-1s come back and those profit, you know, those, those earnings calls come back in the green. The last thing people care about is the, is the, is the health and the well being of the people using their product or involved at the low level. Yeah, no. that, that That's just a, they're just, they're just units. They're numbers. Yep. They're fucking, they're numbers on a page. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> it doesn't. And it's so it's so depressing to think about it. You know, I think about not to go on a on a tangent. What we were talking about this before I went live. Oh, I love tangents, but fucking <laughs> like I th I think about I think about uh, institutions like the FDA. You know, mm -hmm. literally meant to protect the health of the United States citizens. Citizens, and they are absolutely bought and paid for by the biggest companies in the world yeah. that run the food industry, yeah. like big food, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Like you look at a lot of these research, a lot of these, a lot of the research that goes into the guidelines of like what Americans should do and what they're supposed to have and yeah. what's allowed in our foods. <laughs> if you actually go down the rabbit hole of looking who funded all of that research it is the companies that are selling you the food that contains the shit that's making you fat yeah. and get cancer. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, like back, at, back in 80s and 90s, it'd be like, you know, General Mills would have a commercial, like every yeah. other commercial was like about, you know, Cheerios or whatever the fuck else. And it was like part of this complete breakfast. And it's like, according yeah. to fucking who, dude? <laughs> like, it, bra like breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Yeah. Like you got to wake yeah. up and just pound your fucking bloodstream that's with 300 it. grams of sugar of frosted <laughs> flakes, like Wheaties, fucking just like yeah. processed dog shit garbage coming out of factories. You yeah. got to just wake up and shovel three bowls of that if you want to be the next Michael Johnson and win the Olympics. Yeah. Like, the whole thing is fucked. <laughs> on the, yeah, on the Wheaties <laughs> yeah. box, the Olympian on the Wheaties box. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. There yeah. wasn't, they wasn't a dietitian on that team that was like, yeah, you should eat more cereal. <laughs> they yeah, know Ain't no yeah. one been like Don't that eat like fruit or something natural <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. grown in the earth. Like just eat this thing that's processed by the billions yeah, of yeah. pounds on this factory line that we that's fill right. with a bunch of filler because we process so many fucking pounds of it. If we add 2% of filler that we can kind of sneak by the FDA, yeah, yeah. we're going to save hundreds of millions of dollars. You're probably going to suffer for it as far as your health goes, but nobody's going to be the wiser and we're going to be yep, making a shitload that's right. of money. And now we can put that vitamin D label on the box, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's 50 milligrams of vitamin D. It's a, it's a great source of vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. Dude. Oh man. Uh, I am so, I am so bearish on just the fucking, the amount, the amount that these people like, the, and this, it all comes back to the fact that, you know, that my, my North star in life is that like, you really have to, you really have to look out for yourself. Like yeah. you, you can't just trust what you're hearing being handed down by no. whatever institution or government. And one of the reasons I love social media and, you know, kind of this, this, you know, the democratization of access to information is that you can find very real, incredible information, but it's it's a double-edged sword because yeah. once that funnel was opened, you're also exposed to just a whole slew of bullshit from every quack on the planet that yeah. thinks they you, know what is great. So it t you have to be very vigilant in what you consume, how you consume it, and how you kind of reduce everything that you're seeing down to something tangible that makes sense. Yeah, and the, the problem that people have is that they don't have they don't have the uh, mental fortitude or the conviction to look through all of it to find right. the credible information in like that sea of bullshit. And, yep. and you know that's that's why we we don't go on Facebook anymore, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because because my aunt won't stop sharing those one line memes that she swears are real. It's just like, dude, stop, please. You know, I saw a thread. I saw a thread. Uh, uh, it was like an X thread, and it was of Facebook posts of boomers believing AI images. <laughs> <laughs> that's it gotta be so amazing. Funny. It was so funny it's because, be like, great. you just look at it and you see the replies from these people, and you just have to feel bad. They're like, "You are just God." Like you, you're so naive. Like you're not that old. You should have still. A, you yeah. should still have a little bit of a brain in your head, but. You were over here getting suckered by these like these AI generated marketing posts to make you feel a certain way or do a certain thing or join a certain group. 
There and, is, uh, there is like a little bit of a something there though. If you like, like the fact that we automatically, every single time that we see a single thing online, we just automatically go, that's probably bullshit, mm. <laughs> you know? And like, yeah. they're, they're just so 100%. trusting, like they're on the side of the, like they're on the side of the fence where the trust tree still exists and ours got chopped down a long fucking time ago, you know? Demolished. <laughs> but bro. yeah, yeah. When that I, shit got like dude, bulldozed over. When I do videos <laughs> with my wife, uh, on my second channel where we're, we just like look at clips and skits, like what it's very, very low key. I, she always gives me shit. Cause after like 70% of the videos we watch and half of them are probably real. I'm just, yeah, that was probably scripted. Eh, that was probably bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably yeah, yeah. engagement farming. Every, like, every nah. TikTok, every like, one of them. Yeah. And yeah. it's because it's, it's gotten so bad with the amount of, uh, you know, manufactured, real moments and i put real in quotes yeah. air quotes uh, yeah. for people listening because you know people see the reaction that people have to actual real moments that elicit emotion and what's what can you do to grow a page or a brand is to see what works and manufacture that and it, that and that is i feel like facebook was the worst offender of that people like rich lax i don't know if you've heard of that dude but he basically owns a content compound in florida that ha like he's made millions and millions of dollars on youtube and they they have like sets and stages and their whole thing is to is to manufacture what are supposed to come across as real authentic moments like that it are could just be real scripted like like the soldier coming home and his wife's cheating on him or like like all of the shit or like yeah. those you've seen that those facebook posts where people are like holding the big cart uh the big stock board with like the words on it and they're slowly like pulling oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, it yeah. away yeah and it's like all of these things that are engineered to get people to to increase their watch time it's just it's so predatory on people's attention and it's predatory on people that don't that aren't nihilistic and don't aren't terminally online like you and i that can yeah. take one that can watch it for three seconds and be like this is fucking bullshit and click off it yeah, yeah. and want to fucking hang i yourself can go outside with my phone in my pocket can just, you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I, i've just I, it's made me so jaded you know because the, you know as far as like the content creation process goes because there's so much beauty that has come from people being able to make whatever they want for the internet and so much incredible information for everyone to consume, but it, it comes at the price of being inundated by absolute dog shit yeah. all the time. I have to do and scroll to get to the good shit, you know? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 So that's that's pretty much X in a nutshell. Well, yeah. that's actually <laughs> Facebook is the worst. At yeah. least, yeah. Facebook's the worst. <laughs> X is X is a fucking cesspool, but yeah, it is. Yeah. I feel it, but at least like there's some, there's a lot of authentic still moments there, on X. You just, <clears throat> for whatever reason, the algorithm just loves to pump you like, you know, people getting in fights and people getting murdered. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, a, the, no matter how many a, times you hit like not interested, they just keep pumping That, that handful of goddamn accounts that just keeps doing all the, like the, the, yeah, the view yeah. bait bullshit. Yeah, I yeah. could name I could name like three right now, like Internet Hall of Fame, yeah. fucking like you you know all of them. They yeah, yeah. all show up in yeah. everybody's Every feed time. because they just pump out they just pump out recycled fucking clickbait yeah. content. And it's or just and it's all it is is like uh, it was, uh like a uh, there's like a history one, like a like internet yeah. history or something, and like all it is is just recycled clips. Like this happened back in 1987, and you just and like yeah. it's got a seven million views, and you're just like Jesus. Like in ten minutes later, there's another one. It's just yeah, never ends. And then all the replies are just girls plugging their OnlyFans. Yeah, nudes in bio. <laughs> yeah, th those are the worst of the accounts. That those accounts that they um, they do these like weird, sneaky, undisclosed OnlyFans ads where they like they'll post oh, something yeah. controversial, and then it will be in agreement with all these OnlyFans girls that will then uh, reply to it with a plug for their you should fans, see what I the can owner do. of the yeah. account will reply to their reply to boost their replies and that yeah dude the i mean part of me is like you know what don't hate the player hate the game i get it like yeah. this is a hustle there's people making fucking millions yeah and that's really what Maybe it comes down X, to though. i just <laughs> i kind of hate the game but i can't hate people for playing no. it because you know what i'm saying where there's money to be made people are going to do it and at the end of the day there's some sad motherfucker handing over their, you know, twenty percent of their their monthly income to to have a girl with big tits tell them that he's cute or something. I yeah, <laughs> or tell him he's a piece of shit and to like pay him yeah, ten well, grand, yeah. pay her ten or, grand, you know, so she or can metaphorically more. step on his balls yeah, 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 via yeah. the internet yeah. chat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man, <laughs> dude, every it's just that there's a you know rule thirty four for everything, right? <sighs> 
It's I had to recently explain to my wife what Rule Thirty Four was. Oh no! And I'm so sorry. It, it came up in a video, and she's like, "What? Do, what do you mean?" I was like, "Oh, well, Rule Thirty Four. It basically means like anything that ex exists, like at all, ever on the internet mm -hmm. that you can think of, you can name right now. There is a sexualized version of it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you just type in the words Rule Thirty Four, whatever. And yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. don't really ever want to do that. <laughs> she's, I, she's like, she's like, no, that doesn't make sense. I don't even remember. I think we tried one or two things and it was like, it immediately came up, you know, oh, like yeah. tractor or whatever it is. Like there's just something. <laughs> <sexual> tractor. <laughs> yeah. Now I wanted to, I wanted to ask you cause I'm a bit of an audio guy. I have a mm -hmm. background in music. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. You used to be a touring musician. Singer. You were a musician as well. Yeah, I was a singer. Um, yeah, back in the dark ages or whatever. The dark ages. <laughs> yeah. And I see you you have these very nice uh, you know, in ear monitors right yeah. now, which yeah. which I'm jealous of because I have these uh, very budget clunky headphones. They're I, they're wireless, which it was the important part for me in the set that I have built. Yeah. I didn't want to have dangling wires. Um, now, are those from uh, what is it? A sixty four. What is the name S of the company? Sixty four audio. Yeah. Sixty four audio. Yeah. Yeah. So they're uh, they're like uh, uh, Metallica, um, uh, John Mayer, Beyonce, like big 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 time. Artists. Oh, so these are like these are like legit stadium entertainer. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Beyonce's yeah. like audio team works with the engineers there to like get the eighteen driver monitors the way that she wants them. Yeah, yeah, Love it's, that. they're big now, time. And you you have a relationship with them in the sense you have a code you can put on their site, right? Yeah, like, yeah. How yeah. did that relationship come about? So, out of curiosity. So I video game streaming, right? So I play. Okay. Uh, uh, Escape from Tarkov. I used to play this this shooter, Escape from Tarkov, a, a lot. Uh, I don't yeah. do it nearly as much anymore. I play other games now, but um, uh, for for five years and seven hundred videos or whatever, I was a Tarkov guy. Um, yeah. The the guy that's their head of marketing uh, plays that video game. Uh, he plays shooters, and he's he's the guitar tech for like Bad Omens and a couple of other like really large bands. Um, actually, he has a he has a band himself that it's absolutely killer. They're amazing. Um, but, uh, landmark Tony got, uh, a deal with them a long, long time ago because, because the marketing guy was a fan and they were looking at possibly getting into like the video game, you know, sphere, they're a premium brand, but it was like, you know, gamers got money too. Why not? Sure. So, um, when I saw Tony was involved with them, I've been a, I've been a fanboy of their tech for like ever. Uh, I ended up writing just a random email to them and was like, Hey, uh, I'm going to buy a pair of these anyway. Cause you know, I got a couple of bucks. Uh, but after I do that, would you want to work together? And uh, he reached out to me, Ricky, the guy that works over there, he reached out to me and was like, actually, if what you want to do is uh, we can comp you up to like this much, we'll work with you. And I actually help them structure the commission deal that I have that they give to all of the other creators now. Cause I was like the second guy there. Nice. Um, they, they did a deal where it was like, uh, you had a buffer of like 10%. And then it was yep. like, some of that you can take as commission or you can give it to other people as a discount. And I just said, <clears throat> well, just give them the 10% discount. I'm going to get the in-ears anyway. Like I love these things. I'm just going to tell people that I love them. Like, I don't give a shit if I make any money, I make enough. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Which yeah. is really fucking dumb of me. Like I should have just taken some money out of it. But, um, <laughs> yes. So uh, he started the getting, financial planner in you is yeah is really dumb right yeah now. yeah the country yeah. bumpkin in me that's just like <laughs> take everything the, like the reason you left financial planning as well is because you actually care about people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Only yeah about I, was, yourself. I, was just, I was just trying to do good by the people that were watching me that I figured might be interested yeah. in it and I was like well yeah. whatever so um so that was ten percent discount for like a month and then Ricky rings me up and he's like all right look we're trying to expand this out to like include other people if you got recommendations on people that you think would be good for this. Like we could work with some other folks, but we're going to restructure this. I'm going to give you a 5% commission regardless. Everybody gets a 10% discount, blah, blah, blah. Like we're good. And I was like, okay. So I've just, that's the only like affiliate deal that I have anymore since like years ago. I don't do like normally with sponsors. It's like, I, you know, you get paid like whatever you're going to get paid. Like just, I quote right, them, right, they right. pay me. That's it. I don't care about Same, like yeah. sales metrics or any of that other stuff. I don't care. Same. Like I don't want to be paid $10 because somebody decided they were going to order a widget. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but that's the, that's the gig that I, I still keep because I love the product and I love the company and I like the people that work there. Um, and I think that they're like gold standard. Yeah. Um, that being said, they're fucking expensive. <laughs> no. So, so I was browsing before we actually sign on earlier because I, 
I've been looking for a solution because I just don't, you know, I, I just want something in here. I don't like the yeah. clunkiness, whatever it is. And these, these are wireless, which is great. And I wanted to ask, are those, no, they're are wired. those wired yeah. in the back? Yeah. So okay. um, they run down, there's a, there's a clip on my shirt, like right there. Yeah. Um, and then I just run, I just run a wire like across my lap and then it plugs in over at the board. That makes sense. Right. Okay. So, but I don't, I'm not going anywhere, you know, and if I'm, you know, and if I'm going to record something, like I'm going to, you know, make a track or like sing a cover yeah. song or some dumb shit, I just stand up anyway. Like I'm not going anywhere. Um, but in this, in this case, if I wanted them to be wireless then it's like, you know, the wireless body pack from shore or something like I, I have a receiver over there, but. Um, like it's not. I was like gonna say, do you, can you can you buy a separate pack and plug the three and a half into oh, yeah, it yeah, and yeah, make yeah. it wireless? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, any of like the major audio brands, Shure, Sennheiser, uh, AKG, uh, Audio Technica. It's they, compatible. They Rode, you're they literally all, they all just plugging them. it into the receiver pack, and then and it actually yeah. actually uh, the Rode, you, you know those the little square like Rode mobile mics. Um, uh, yes, I actually have. Uh, I have mo most I have everybody has like those. The, or I I so the the Rode ones. I have the DJI ones, but the, Rode. Is the same version yeah right? so so the I, I don't know what the dji ones look like but the road ones the little square road ones one of them's the mic and the other one's the receiver the microphone yep. actually has or the the receiver actually has like a headphone thing uh that you could punch into it and it will record on the body so there's stuff that oh, you nice. can there's stuff that you can do um but other than that if though, you really needed it to be wireless yeah right? yeah other than that yeah. though it's like uh like like stage setup like transmitter receiver like body pack you know that you put on your belt or whatever and right. you plug it in yeah um, they don't have anything that's like true wireless because um, like Bluetooth has a delay. And if it was Bluetooth like Bluetooth is the worst, it yeah, sucks. And if it was wireless, got, wireless, the, it would need more hardware, you know? Right. And that, that's why, that's why I got these headphones because they have a, they have a docking station and it's, uh, it's uh, RF or whatever, Yeah, not RF, whatever, whatever it is. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a radio frequency as opposed to Bluetooth. Yeah. So it has a docking station that receives obviously the headphone and then, then that plugs into the, the yeah. normal Three and a half, and it and it works, but it's there's a there's a minor delay. It's it's yeah. just uh, there's a lot of hum, there's a lot of noise, whatever. We're like this is real yeah. geeky nerdy this shit, because because like, yeah. yeah. I know I know one peg is uh, he's a bit of an audiophile, which I, I am too. Yeah. And I'm I'm curious what what I got actually, you into kind of a high end electronics? Was it your your kind of my dad. your early career as a singer, kind of involved in that, or or what was it? Was, the, it was my dad. Actually, oh, your dad. Okay, yeah. So my my dad is a is a total like engineering nerd. Um, I love it. He I was a uh, he was in a, a nuclear submarine in Vietnam in the engine room. Oh, baby! <clears throat> yeah, in the engine room, and he's a and he was a career machinist after that. Like he made cannon okay. barrels at an arsenal in New York and stuff. Like working for the Fed, and then um, then he went into the accounting office, and uh, now he works at an R and D lab making hydrogen fuel cells. Like that's what he does. Wow. For living. Like like doing R and D for that. Um, so he's still going, he's still working hard. But as a, as a hobby, as soon as he got out of the Navy, um, he started doing live sound for bands like that. Just, wow. he just enjoyed it. So when I was growing up, it was like family and friends, like, you know, my uncle and like all of his buddies growing up, they were like the cast of Jackass, but they played music. Um, they had like a Southern rock cover band, you know, like all the, like the Eagles tunes and shit, uh, Amazing. and like 38 special and stuff. Um, I would go and watch them and then they would have like these blues, uh, these blues projects and like all this other stuff. And my dad and like horn bands and my old man was like the best fucking sound guy I've ever heard in my entire life. Like you go and hear live shows and you're like, Oh, well the, like the vocals are kind of getting washed out. Like my dad, no, my fucking dad got in front of a console and it was just like, I can hear fucking everything. This is ridiculous. <laughs> like he was just, he's just good. He's just got the ear for it. So he got me into like you know, what's a good microphone like? And like, you know, what's a good board? So like he, he made me an Allen and Heath fanboy, which is what that is. Um, okay. So uh, that's a, that's an Allen and Heath QU 16. It's like a, it's like a generation older than what they currently produce, which is the SQ. And that's your mixing board you're talking about? Yeah. The mixer. Yeah. 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 So that, that mixer runs like 2,300. Um, yeah. The SQ series, which is the new ones, they're like five grand for like the small one. Um, but they're, they're insane. They have like, they have like, uh, like that has like compressors and like four separate FX channels and all kinds of shit in it and like gates mm -hmm. and all that. Um, the, the SQ series has like multi-band compressors, which are fucking wild. I, yeah, I love that. Wild. I love that shit. Um, yeah, yeah. so like, yeah, yeah. All the, all the knobs and buttons and stuff. Um, but he was the one that got me into like what good audio is supposed to sound like and like how to EQ shit and like how much, how much reverb is supposed to be on this and like how much delay is supposed to be over here. And you know, like what's a so noise you game? ever, so he, and, and like he's learning all this as, for live production, which is a whole different beast. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Did he ever do any post production, like uh, just pro like music <coughs> production in general? Were you doing it? Have you done any of that as well? Because so, that's kind of how I started on YouTube. Yeah. So my production. dad's my dad's best friend, like growing up in high school, they stayed best friends like through their entire life. Um, he has a half a million dollar like rubber free floating studio with its own ventilation system, like off the side of his garage. Uh, like the thing boner, is dude. fucking huge insane. Boner. Like two isolation yeah. boosts, like. Like like the uh, the guitar booth has like has like broken glass like up on the ceiling for like all the fucking natural like, reflections like yeah. Just, yeah just crazy Diff shit. diffusion rather yeah, yeah 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 the diffusion <laughs> so it's just like and my dad my dad like because he's just that way he understands how it all works so he like Saturday Friday night Saturday all day like after work or whatever he'd just be up there like helping him run wires and like you know troubleshooting this and troubleshooting that like making sure stuff worked right um, he he understands it all. <clears throat> Uh, he's never been one for like sitting in a studio and like mixing and mastering. Um, he just knows like how to make shit sound good, like in the levels. Yep. And then it's like, all right, well some, some mastering engineer would have to like handle it after that. Um, but all of his shit is old school though. Right. Like he doesn't understand like uh, how, a lot, how a, a lot of analog stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. of his old stuff was like old Boston acoustic shit. And like, yeah, um, yeah, nowadays it's like you go to a live show and it's like, they have like these live snap in arrays that just run off of an iPad, 300 fucking sets of speakers. And then they're, they're they, they can map the beaming out to like each different section of seats so that yeah. no one has a dead spot. Like that stuff is wild. Like that's a whole it, different level of science. That is, yeah, it's wild the, to to see how far just that the live production and just music production in general has gone in the last yeah. 30, 40, 50 years from, you know, analog tape recording, you know, to what you can do now with a fucking iPhone oh, or an and, iPad. Oh, and like, these fucking Forget, kids. If you have a laptop, you can, you can do, you can record a symphony, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, and like these guys on TikTok that like through like different filters and like, you know, some, some pitch correction and whatever, like they're making bangers in fucking two hours. You know, yeah, like like wild. on 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 uh, on the internet, and it's like they're taking some samples and just laying down a beat. And you're like, that is fucking fire! How long did that take you? I don't know, like twenty five minutes. It's like, what the yeah. fuck, man? Like that would have taken me a week. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, they no, just once, know it. Some of these cats that have been doing it, they do it enough. They know the tools they're using. Mm -hmm. They're not paralyzed by, you know, uh, over choice and the endless amount of tracks. Like one of the things I always struggled with when I was producing music was you know, the overchoice. You know, there's just so many things you can do. It's a real talent to be able to to hone in on what's going to make a track better yeah. and be okay and just say, hey, that's that's enough. That's done. I don't need to add a new part. And, yeah. you know, one of, one of the, I think one of the biggest talents as a producer is knowing when to create space and how to do that because it's so easy to just mash so many things into music now because there's endless software instruments. There's endless fucking plugins. It's just a never-ending tool bag and to be able to pick what tools you want to use and create something that's emotionally impactful is a real talent. Yeah. I can't think of the guy's name. He, um, he, he, he's been, um, like all over like Kimmel and like he used to, he did tracks for like Drake and stuff. He's got like perfect pitch and like, you'll see him like, Oh, Charlie Puth. P Puth. Yeah. He yep. was, dude, he was making bangers when he was like 16. Yeah, he's nice. Like he, he he's it, he's like, got a lot of mainstream songs now. But when you look at some of the stuff he's done, he his produced like level is like unreal. over the years, and it's like, dude, you were in high school and you were like putting these yeah. guys on platinum records. Like it's insane. Like him yeah. and and uh, Murder Beats, same yeah. thing, man. He just like Murder Beats just turned thirty, and it's like, dude, yeah. you've been knocking out stuff for like over a decade. Like you were doing this shit in high school. That that dude plays Tarkov too. He ended up following me on Twitter. I'm like, what the dude. fuck? I'm like, hey, he sends me a DM. He's like, when are we play in Tarkov, man. And I'm like, what the? I don't. I don't even know what world I'm living in right now. This is nuts. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, the the music thing is funny because I have such a soft spot for it because I grew up in an incredibly musical household. My mother's a, a a lifetime organist, pianist. You know, studied it in college. It's been her life's work. Uh, that's and, cool. You know, so I've always had that background. I grew up singing in choirs and doing different, you know, plays at, uh, at church, <laughs> whatever, whatever yeah. it was at the time. Been there. And so I have such an appreciation for it. And I, you know, I have some innate talent as far as pitching, being able to sing. And I play guitar. I was in a band for years. But there's just another level that some people have that, like, I think you're really just, you're either born with or you're not. Like, you can practice and you can train uh, honestly, like perfect, obviously perfect pitch is kind of one of those things in Charlie's case where, yeah. you know, you can hear a timber or a note and be like, oh yeah, C sharp, you know, B, B minor. Must like, be nice. Yeah. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? What are you like, was, what is I that? know it was so higher that, than the other one, you know? <laughs> that's, that's mutant behavior yeah, is yeah. what that is. Yeah. 
And I'm so envious of that. And I feel like in, in all the years I was doing music, I always felt like just the guy that was decent. And I, if I had the work ethic, maybe I could have made it happen. But I, you know, I, because of just my normal talent, you needed that work ethic. Although as I'm hearing these words come out of my mouth, I'm also thinking there's been so many people that have made careers in music that are just talentless fucking morons. So I don't know what I'm actually saying. <laughs> really depends on what you're going really, for. I really guess. Really good engineers and money to make it happen. You know, like it's must yeah, be that's nice. true. True. Must be nice. because, I mean, so much of popular music is the image and then all of the actual music thing going on behind the scenes is being done by people that nobody knows their name, you know? Yeah. Or a lot of times, certainly there's obviously a lot of producers that have made names for themselves, but so or they, much or they of, buy songs, right? Like somebody else oh, yeah. wrote the song. You, you and buy a beat, buy you buy a beat and yeah. it turn, you know, goes viral or yeah. something. It's yeah. Music's music's interesting. I, I'm curious. I'm interested. You know, I, I look at the, the state of the music industry now and just how that's just transformed wildly in the last 20 years. I mean, you grew up in the era of the MP3. We're downloading MP3s. We're listening to them on Winamp. Yeah, there's yeah. Napster. There's yeah, Kazam. Yeah. You're downloading, you know, Third Eye Blind tracks, you know, wondering if you're going to get raided by the FBI because you're pirating music all these years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Where, getting the emails yeah. like, we know that you pirated that movie, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, exactly. like Time Warner's like, listen, you got to stop doing that or we're coming to your house, you know. I'm gonna, and here we are all these years later. We have these streaming services where, you know, the every song you could ever imagine is a f one finger click away, yeah. you know, and it's, yeah. it's really, it's changed my, uh, it's changed my music listening experience a lot. Yeah. Just, just out of, I don't want to say necessity, just as, you know, it's evolved with the way music is distributed. You know, back when we were younger, it was CDs. You bought a physical thing and it was, it was special. It was a, it was a work of art. It was all these songs together and you had put it in the CD player and listen to it. And now, you know, music has kind of gone the way of the TikTok generation where everything's a playlist. It's like who actually sits down and listens to a full fucking album? Like nobody, like you're just, there's playlists. It's next. It's this, it's what's hot in the moment. And I say, I say nobody, obviously there's still people like maybe you or your father's like this, like maybe you have a, 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 a record collection and you like to put on a record and listen to it for old time's sake. But mm -hmm. younger kids, nobody knows the, the beauty of going to, you know, strawberries <laughs> and buying a fucking CD, <laughs> fucking strawberries. putting it on and listening to it from front to back and getting yep. chills in every song and listening to it over and over and over again, because there was... That's what you listen to. The only thing else was like turn on the radio and like you hear the same couple songs. Yep. But now it's every song ever are just available, not yep. only on, on Spotify, Apple, Instagram. So the way artists are making livings now is crazy. Just, you know, you see some of these guys on Instagram with a couple million followers because they've figured out how to properly market their music. Nobody, you know, they, they're independent. They don't have a label, but they're getting millions and millions of streams online. It's uh yep. It's it's incredible. Like the opportunity it's, it's no, is a lot different now, for sure. It is. You don't need it's the a lot you don't need the majors it, anymore. You don't need the majors, but I do, but it but it takes, you know, with with that opportunity comes intense competition. Oh yeah, you have to be which something is true special. for any sort of content yeah. creation, right? Well, any product, so, right? If you think about any it. product, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's kind of what happened as as things as as everyone's attention is is kind of transferred to the internet over the last few decades. Uh, it's created that opportunity, but really it forces you to do something to make yourself stand out. Whether that's your work ethic, where you're just pumping out shit nonstop, mm -hmm. and eventually something happens, or you're doing something that is just so. Uh, profound or unique that it it commands attention yeah. and maybe you don't do as much volume but it's just so you know you're creating something so special that people will stop and watch I think of someone and you probably, this is not music but this is comedy you familiar with Bo Burnham oh yeah of course yeah, yeah. so like Bo Burnham to me was the kind of, like he he has been he's brilliant. someone who I've always revered uh, just for his creative genius and the way that he you know, I started YouTube doing that thing and then went through the depression, the whole nine yards, logged off for a while and then occasionally comes up with, and early on it was like the specials, the Netflix thing, yep. but it was his more recent one that he did. I say recent, it was probably two years ago now where he just logged off and literally sat in a room for two years and created this thing. And that to me is like something that was special. And it he created this thing that everyone kind of stopped and watched and talked about and 
but as we do, like it was amazing. It was awesome. And it's a week goes by and then everyone's on to the next thing. Yeah. So, so there's this, there's this symptom of the way we consume content now where no matter, even if you are one of the most, most prolific creators and you're creating things that take thousands of hours and genius to create, you still need to have an element of, well, I got to do the next thing. Like I just yeah. got to put upload the next yeah, video. To, I got to make the next thing, the next song, the, the next stream. Like, yeah, you have to bottle the lightning and everyone goes, all right, now what? Yeah. What are you going to do yeah. next? And that's, that's yeah. the hardest part. Cause you got to like, you got and like, you know, every, every fucking algorithm when it comes to content creation is the same way. It's like, you have to make a banger after another banger after another banger. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, you make, you make two shit ones in a row and then people just fall off. You know? Yeah. People were like, what happened, bro? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you <laughs> fell off. And then, you know, it's L plus ratio, like whatever else the fucking consumers are saying. Yeah. And it, it, it's, <clears throat> it's one of the wild parts of having a career where you're, you're, you're living your life online in a lot of respects and you're creating content and everything you do, all the metrics are public. So people can just watch and be like, well, three months ago, you're doing twice as good. You're a fucking loser. And like, there is a, there is a level of mental fortitude you have yeah. to have yeah. to be able to just shake that off and not really care. Yeah. Like you always feel it. Like I remember when I initially in 2018, I'd been grinding for years doing stuff. And I finally, I had my watershed moment where things really went parabolic. Mm-hmm. I was able to go full time. And I knew that, that obviously always comes back down and it's just about kind of finding that new homeostasis and seeing if you can sustain that. And then, you know, the last six years has been this ebb and flow of having that homeostasis where you have the community and the people that really support you when you're not catching algorithm bangers. And then you occasionally have those things that do really well and it reaches a whole new audience. And that brings in some new people as Mm -hmm. old people are leaving to see someone else. It's this very, delicate dance of, you know, having to be consistent, trying to innovate while still sticking to the thing that, you know, your audience likes, um, you know, and it can be, it's, it's, it's wild, man. You know, I look back in the last six, seven years and I'm sure you do too, as a streamer, which is the same in a lot of respects, you you just all you just always feel this weight this heaviness of like no matter how good the last thing was the only thing that matters is the next thing yeah and it can it can be really exhausting sometimes but yo best dude I feel the world that. wouldn't trade it for there were, there, were, <laughs> dude, there were there were moments in my like history where it was like I got outside of like you know because I my my favorite kind of content to make is actually like sharing like cool stories that happen like over okay. time or like you know, sharing it, sharing a piece of news. Like I, my, a lot of my stuff is like news or educational. Um, but like the, you remember, uh, that, that PC building company, artesian, artesian yes. builds. Oh, that was <clears> that, 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 then the CEO fucked that whole thing. Yeah. Like the whole, like that's a reroll and like screwed some girl out of like a, yes, like a lottery yes. winning PC or whatever. Because so, she wasn't hot or something like that. I forget. No, she didn't, she didn't have like hardly or any she didn't viewers have or followers. followers. Yeah. Yeah. Was. He was yeah. like, Oh, well that's not going to work. Like you have to be at least this big to ride this ride. Like it was so that's fucked crazy. up. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I latched onto that and I started looking cause I, I like doing like the investigative stuff. So I started looking mm-hmm. into like his company and like tax filing documents and stuff in California and realized that he hadn't paid his business taxes in like three years and they vacated his oh, LLC. Boy. So I made a video about that. He ended up declaring bankruptcy like three days later because, oh. because the warehouses that were supplying him with parts on credit found out and then they cut him off and said cash only. So he couldn't get yeah. any new parts for any of the PC builds. And they turned, like when they turned him off, he was like, well, we're screwed. And he just, they closed the doors. They filed chapter 11 like that week. So like, so I get, I get involved in like that kind of stuff and like, it'll blow up and I'll get referenced by like huge YouTubers, but it mm-hmm. never really ended up. But it, like after that, it's like, oh fuck, now what am I going to do? You know? Cause like, I'm not really known for this. Like then, then what? And like, there's no other like story to like go on. Cause that's not the core of my content. So it's like, right. well, I guess I'll go back to making like video game videos again. And like, you know. <laughs> It's just, it's just weird sometimes. And like, that's been, I think my issue with my like YouTube presence and like, you know, I, I do okay. Like it, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a mortgage payment or whatever. Um, you know, it covers my mortgage and taxes every month, but, uh, what I've noticed is on, on my end, it's like, um, I have like identity crises that I go through where it's like, I'd really like to make this, but then my bread and butter is like over here. And like the two things just aren't fucking related. And it's like, Oh, I can make a new channel about this. You know, do I really want to go through like that headache again? You but know, then you're spreading your, but, <laughs> but are you spreading yourself too Then thin? it's all over the place. You know what I mean? So yeah. 
Uh, it's it's funny because you get like, and, and like there's there's another thing with that too where it's like I'll make a video that takes me literally 15 minutes to generate, and it'll get 50,000 views in like two hours, you know. <laughs> and it's like, all right, well that was cool. And then I'll have a passion project that takes me like 35 hours to edit my my way through and like script and all that stuff and 5k. You know, like, 10 out of 10, like you just get nothing. Flopped. Yeah, you just get yeah. fucking nothing. I've you know? really I've always kind of in appreciated the meme which I think is is kind of true or the harder you work on something the worse it does. To yeah. to allow it's like as stupid as that sounds that's obviously not true once you've perfected and like know what you're doing yeah, if, you're like if you're Mr. Beast or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but when you're when you have a channel that's kind of niched in a certain way and you're a creator and like you're locked into doing this thing, people have come to expect this particular type of content from you. And you're like, fuck it, I want to get the creative juices flowing and do something. And you go outside the box and you spend all this extra time and effort. That's always the video that fucking goes 10 out of 10 flops. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it sucks because it's, that's not, I hate that because that's, that's, it's not an indictment on the content. I really don't think it is. It's just because the way YouTube works, mm -hmm. like you can't expect the you know your entire audience that is used to this one thing to be pumped about maybe this thing they're not used to maybe the thought maybe it was packaged the wrong way the thumbnail like looked different so they didn't even know it was you and if yeah. they watched they would have liked it there's a million different reasons so you know i've gone through that in the years i did a, a video at the end of last year 23 called like 20 principles that changed my life in 2020 and you know totally totally off the grid of what i normally do where i'm like critical commentary, talking shit, doing body cams, whatever it yeah, might be. Yeah, yeah. And this was like, Hey, just sit down. Like, here's 20 things that I've really, I've worked on the last year that have changed my life, like fitness, discipline, d different things that I, I think might help you. And, uh, I knew going into it, that video was going to flop just because I've done this thing before. And, and the video did is 10 out of 10, got maybe half the views or less, but the people that watched it in comment, I, I still, to this day, like this doesn't happen for a lot of my videos. I, I got an email two days ago that were like, yo, I just watched this video from like last, last Christmas. Like, thank you so much. Like it was really impactful. You said some things that really helped, uh, you know, inspire me to make this change in my life that I've been able to continue and do. So there's this, there's this disconnect between impact and reach. Isn't, I think. Isn't that shit the best though? When yeah. You, oh no. I love those it. emails. Aren't they yeah, the fucking, 100%. like, the best? Like, that is, it's like... the best. Like, that is, like, the epitome for me. When I get an email like that from somebody that's just, like, dude, I've been going through a rough time. Just want to let you know, like, you guys, you've helped me out a lot. Like, I really appreciate when you talk about, like, this thing or that thing. Because I'm, I'm a huge advocate for mental health. So, okay. um, you know, when I whenever I get those, it's just, like, the, the dopamine rush is just, like, through the roof. I'm, like, this is awesome. Like, I love that yeah, shit. Yeah, it... It is rewarding. I mean, there it, it's it's easy to get lost in the the vanity metrics and the analytics and running yeah. a business. Obviously, this yeah. is a business. We have to pay attention to those things. But at the end of the day, the core of the business is people consuming things that you make and do. Yeah. And it's I don't ever want to get lost on that. So I I do. I I'm I'm always you know anytime I'm feeling down or like I'm I'm unhappy because something I did isn't working or, you know, maybe the channels in a, in a Valley after coming up, you know, having a couple good months, we're on, on we're on the downward trajectory, which is any YouTuber's career yeah. ever. Uh, I always remember that, man, how fortunate am I, how fortunate am I to have <laughs> however many people, yeah. a couple million people a month that watch my shit, like insane. Yeah. And, and that it's cool? so easy to be like, well, Oh God, this guy's doing so much better. And this guy's blowing up and this guy's yeah. doing that. What a what a fickle game if you play that. I think you just it's it's always it's always important to come back to the center and be like, listen, why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? There's gonna be ups and downs. But the fact that people come out and watch me appreciate some of the things I do is a blessing. I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, I think I think the hardest part about this gig in general, just content creation in general, is just focusing on the stuff that you figure you can make that is like creatively satisfying to yourself. And trying your damnedest to just ignore whatever the numbers are and assume yeah. that like it's gonna work out, you know, like that's that's the hardest part. Because in in my case, well, in, in in anybody's case, I'm sure your case too. Like, no matter what you do, you are always like, all right, where am I in the ten out of ten ranking? <laughs> Every yeah, time yeah. you upload one, is it number one? Is it number five? It. Oh, it's gray. Yeah. Fuck, you know. <laughs> all right, well, I got a green check mark. Like, we're doing all right. Like, it's coming back. You know, like, well, maybe I should change the title of the thumbnail or something. Like, 
you try to like not do that, but it always kind of like ekes its way in there. And I think like the people that just like, like, like Cody, like donut, like he'll just, he makes a video and he puts it up and he's like, yeah, that's pretty good. And he just goes on with the rest of his damn life. And it's like, man, (laughs) how freeing would that be? (laughs) You you know, like, uh, like that's, that's the hardest part for me. I can, I'm pretty good at when I'm like live, like my live content. I don't bother looking at like how many people are watching. I just try to like have my stream. And then at the end I'll be like, Oh, so it was like three fifty this time. Like, that's good. You know, like that's about where I should be at this point. You know, I want to be yeah. at like 2000, but I'll take three fifty four hundred like concurrent. That's good. That works for me. Um, yep. you know, it's like, all right, cool. I can, you know, I paid my bills today. <laughs> like, uh, like that kind of shit. Um, but trying to like just outwardly ignore it. And you know, that, that is like a skill I don't possess and I strive to become, you know, that, that person. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that there needs to be, it needs to be respected. Like when it is your business and your job, like you can't pretend like those things don't matter because yeah. they do. Like, I think it's, it's almost a little bit, you know, I, there is this mindset that like, you know, just, just do what you love and you'll never work a day in your <laughs> life or like, own yeah. like you have to love what you do or it'll never be sustainable. And like, sure, there's an element of truth to that. But you can't pretend like attention markets don't exist, right? If what yeah. you love is not interesting and doesn't matter to people, sorry, maybe you probably can't turn that into a living. So yeah. there needs to be this element of respect for like, is this viable at yeah. least? You're still going to switch it on. You're, you're, yeah, you're, exactly. And then, and then, you know, when you, you know, for me, it's like when I, if I'm going to try something new or, or do something, even like with this podcast, uh, you know, I'm going to continue the other parts of the business that people are used to and try to try to grow something like this that's longer form and slower pace that I really enjoy doing after years of uh, doing stuff that's faster paced and more editing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that but that and that's a business decision. Like, well, sure, I'd love to just, you know, pa- you know, stop doing some of the things that I'm not as in love with anymore. But if that's part of the business, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing those things and try to grow something else on the side and yeah. see what happens. There's all these considerations that need to be made, but so it's a balance. You know, I, I always get a kick out of people that like, uh, that just, they, you know, they, they look at content creation and they're like, well, if you're, you know, if, if, if you're not fully, if you don't love it and you're not passionate about it anymore, like just stop doing it totally. And I'm like, well, if you're good at it and it's lucrative, if, if you're good at it and it's lucrative, maybe consider continuing to do it. You know, I've been a Well, you refine that spark somewhere else. Okay. I, I've been a plumber for 10 years. I'm really good at it. It helps me pay all of my bills, but yeah. you know, my heart's just not in it anymore. Yeah. Like, I just, God damn, I'm just gonna I, quit. I do not want to plunge another toilet with a fat shit in it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to give it up and yeah, go I don't know if I can make those house like, calls for all that cash yeah. anymore. Like, I think I'm just going to quit. Like, yeah, yeah. Most people aren't so, doing that. So I do think there is, it's specifically talking about the entertainment kind of creator space. There is some people there's, I see this level of entitlement where it's like, if they're not getting maximum joy out of it, they like make this video and they're like, well, fuck, sorry guys, I'm depressed and all these things. And yeah. I'm like, I, I get it. Like you're not immune to the ebbs and flows of the human condition of depression and elation and yeah. all these things, but you are in a position of privilege that people like your audience, like they're not going to be able to appreciate that because yeah. guess what? You make a living making videos online. Yeah. So it might be better to keep some of those things to yourself and continue. I don't know. This is just my view. I have on it. No, like when I, I, see- I I agree with you somewhat. Actually, uh, I think yeah. I do think that there's a little bit of a difference between people that are making like really creative shit. Like, yeah. like if you're if you're spending forty hours, fifty hours, a hundred hours, like doing a lot of editing work and like teaching yourself how to animate and like trying to be like a true creative person, and you end up hitting a rut. Like that to me, like I can see the effort that people put into like that kind of stuff. If your yeah. entire job is like. I live stream to 1500 people every time that I'm live. And all I do is click a mouse in someone's head. And then some 18 year old kid pulls a bunch of like funny moments from my stream and turns that into a video for me that I then monetize. Like to me, it's like, you didn't really do an awful lot of work for that. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) like, like, like there's a difference between somebody that is like, like, like yourself that like you're producing your own music. Like you're going out of your way to like try and hone the craft 
And then somebody that's just like, well, I click on people's faces really fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. It, like if there's, well, I, there's a disconnect I'm not going to put myself in a different category. Like I, my career has gotten to the point now where I also have a team. A lot of the stuff yeah, I've been yeah. able to outsource. You outsource? I, sure. I don't consider anything that I do very special. I feel fortunate that I have a talent sometimes to be funny on camera. People enjoy that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is an element, and I, I actually wanted to mention this, like, you know, when when I look back at 2016, 17, I was, I was, in, I was doing more musical stuff. I was more involved, as you have to be in the early stages. You're putting everything into this before it's a business because you're just trying to see what works. And I feel like part of the progression of scaling and getting bigger sometimes when you feel the pressure of the rat race and the hamster wheel and the idea that you have to put out a new piece of content every week, mm -hmm. two times a week, three times a week, yeah. quantity is better. Like whatever that is, you, it, and it's your full-time job and supporting a family and paying your mortgage and all these things, you have to make creative concessions. Absolutely. You, excuse me. You don't have to, but well, you oftentimes go crazy that's it. what happens to continue to scale. Yeah. You let go of some of the editing, you give away some of the ideation, maybe you have people helping you script. and Just like any other business. Just like any other business. And part of me resents that. Because I, you know, I think any, I think any creator who's had a career that's spanned several years mm -hmm. misses some of the, the novelty of the early days when it was like just everything yeah. they were doing was fully funded by the creative juices that were not being taxed by the responsibilities of being a CEO that runs a business and has to wear several different hats. Yeah. And so there's that balance too. And that's something I've grappled with the last few years. And <clears throat> part of the reason why I wanted, I think to do a podcast and do conversations like this is not because it takes a lot of creative juices, but it just, it's more engaging for me. Like, you know, I've made hundreds and hundreds of videos now in the style that I do them. And there's an element of doing that, that I still really enjoy but as humans do, you get, I think, complacent and you want to find that next challenge, like that Absolutely. next thing you can do. And that's, I think everybody goes through that. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, wondering what that looks like, wanting to create something that involves community where I live in the Boston area. You know, I look at the guys down in Texas and I have such a great envy for that community they have down there because there's just such, so many cool dudes all in the same physical location doing really cool stuff. And I, I just, if you uh, were like, I if you were like single and like 30, 32 yeah, yeah. years old, 35, whatever, like I would move in a fucking heartbeat in a heartbeat. Just yeah, go same. like, bro, same. yeah, like where's the nearest piece of real estate so I can hang out with you guys every weekend. I fucking love those dudes. They yeah. are great people. Yeah, they really, I, are. I do think of that too, because man, if I was, if this was 10 to 15 years ago, you know, I, didn't have a home and a child and a wife yeah. like dude, you could go anywhere you could do yeah, it yeah. and, that, and that that would inform the trajectory of your career in many ways yeah. it can because your environment plays such a big role in what you create what you do the relationships you foster mm -hmm. but you know for someone like you and for like me that's not the priority the priority right. for me is the family absolutely and the homestead Same. and being a present father and all of these things that are more important to me than numbers on a screen, views, dollars. And so the next so the next thing becomes how can I do what I'm doing, staying what I'm doing well, being restricted to this physical location. Obviously, as much as I'd love to do in-person interviews with everybody, <laughs> I'm doing a lot remote because yeah. I what is I, I eventually want to be able to that have a little sick. studio where I can yeah. fly people out, similar to the way unsubscribe podcast does it. Yeah. I love that. That would be sick. Uh just, just not there yet. But yeah. uh, in the meantime, this is great. But yeah, how's man, your? I, uh, how do you feel like your work life balance has been <coughs> as of as of late? Better than the, at the start, or as it that was my question for you. Ah. No. <laughs> uh, so that that's <clears throat> something I I will say. The last couple of years, I've been I think proud of that. I've really been really been present for my son's like he's five and a half now. And man, some of the best years that's of my awesome. life have been the past yeah, five and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it only happens once. It goes by in a flash. And if you're not around, it, you, you can't get it back. You can look at the pictures. But, yeah. and you know, I think part of, part of the last several years has been making 
uh, occupational concessions to make sure that I'm around and I'm doing those things. And it's not to say that like I could always be better at utilizing my time effectively. I think that is a skill that uh, I think a lot of people think that they don't have enough time. You know, oh, you have a family, you have kids. And it's like, there's just not enough time to get in shape or go to the gym or make a business or do that. It's like, no, you're just really bad at u- using your yeah. time effectively. Yeah. Like you can find the time. Like <clears throat> if you're you like, could give dude, up your you hour of doom of scrolling Shogun? every day and makes, take seven hours to work on something for the week. Like it is what it is. But yeah, yeah I, I've, I've been good at that. But recently since starting the podcast and a few more responsibilities, I'm back to kind of juggling a few more plates than I'm used to. So I've had to uh, revisit that balance. And my wife, God bless her, is very understanding. If there's some weeks where I'm just less available, she's great at holding down the fort and all these things. But what, what's that look like for you as someone who, you know, I know, you know, streaming is a whole different commitment yeah. because it's like when you're live, you're live. Yeah. For me, I'm making videos that can be made whenever and I'm uploading VODs. How's yeah. that look like for you and the kids? Mine is, mine is... <clears throat> uh, has been a struggle for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. So, uh, so I, my, my kids are all spread out. My son is going to be 19 in May. Uh, I had had a kid, my, my son was born on my 24th birthday. So, um, we have that, we have, you know, same birthday is really, really easy not to forget. Um, but my, I also have a 12 year old and then my little one is, is three. She's going to be four in July. So, yeah, the, 16 years between yeah. the oldest and the youngest. Yeah, so you the, the little around. one keeps me hopping. Yeah, well, mom, <laughs> mama gets what she wants, right? You know, so like, that's craziness. Um, man. yeah, the um, the so I've seen like you know, like one leaves like the major stage of development, like the next one comes in. It's kind of it's kind of funny that way, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> I've felt I felt in a lot of different uh, circumstances, cases over the over the years, like m- where I've missed like little bits and pieces because I've worked so much. Um, yep. But like at the same time, it's like I've learned how to become much more regimented where, you know, I'll, I'll go and work on content stuff, you know, live or otherwise until like four thirty, five o'clock. And then, you know, I go make dinner, you know, and I'm there for, you know, three, four hours, like bedtime, you know, between like seven thirty and nine or whatever. And then, you know, if I need to, I come back out here and like do whatever I got to do. Uh, and then, you know, you try to make a, like, like carve out time on the weekends. Like I don't, I don't do nearly as much, you know, make sure that there's like some time available. Um, I've gotten better at it. I used to be really bad at it. Like I'm, I'm one of those, I'm I'm like a workaholic. So I'll like, uh, regardless of what it was I was doing, like I've been self-employed since I was 25. So regardless of what it was that I was doing, I would just like dive into it, you know, like contract, you know, job, whatever. And uh, me getting paid meant that I got to work till three in the morning. Fine. Like, I'm just going to keep working on this place until it's finished. And then, you know, yeah. I can build the, the, the customer or whatever. So um, that's, that's always kind of been how I've approached things. There's been many nights where I've been up until like 2, 3 a.m. just like working away on something because, you know, I'm like a dog with a bone with certain pieces of content that I'm making. But yep. it gets, it gets, it's gotten better over the years. I'm, I'm getting better at it now. But it's, it's mainly because of like what we were talking about before, like being able to like uh, outsource certain aspects of what it was that I used to have to do or was doing like all by myself. Like now I have editors and, you know, those kinds of things to, to take care of those pieces that I was doing on my own. There are still things that I'll do hands-on by myself, but it's usually like, like passion project kind of shit is, is like where I'll dive into it alone. Um, for the most part though, uh, I try to maintain like whatever, whatever that set schedule is that I said that I'm going to like adhere to so that like they know that I'm around. Cause like you said, I don't, I don't want to miss stuff. So I'm trying to scale it back over time. Like I'd actually like to stream a lot less and, and just kind of be able to uh, transition that into more recorded sided stuff. But uh, for whatever reason, it hasn't, um, it hasn't been my focus, which is probably why it hasn't taken off nearly as much. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've said this in previous uh, talks with some people on this podcast, just, you know, the, the seasonality of life in a lot of ways. Like I think, I think anyone who's built something or, it, it, it has a has a business, runs a business, or is an online creator and manages channels and whatever it is you're doing uh, outside of maybe a traditional W two. It's it's very easy just to get lost in the you know that never ending pressure of if you're not working you're dying right yeah because there's no you know there's there when you when you have your own business in and especially in this particular uh, vertical, which is content creation. It's like, there's no, there's no ceiling to what you can do. And the only one 
stopping you from achieving what you're trying to achieve is you. Like you could always be doing more no matter yep. what. So there's this mental hurdle to get over that, to to try and be okay with A, where you're at, with how you're doing, and then finding a way to to make sure you're not letting that tunnel vision just really distract you from the things in life that truly matter to me, which is like, you know, the family, the relationships with your loved ones, like, but at the same time, like you do as a father and a husband, like you, you want to be the provider that can, yep. that can do these things. So there's like, there's that identity because so much it, for me being a man traditionally that was raised in a conservative household, uh, same. that is so much of my identity is, is being, is being someone who can, you know, provide for my family and being someone my son can look up to and that my wife respects and, you know, being in a blessed position where she's able to stay at home and be, a, you know, take care of the house and, and be with my son when I'm at work yep. and all these things. But then the flip side of that, like wanting to not be that dad that, you know, my son th- grows up and is like, yeah, I don't really remember. Like, yeah, he's just always in the office all the time. So it's like, yeah. That that's as an adult, you know, in the in the la- in the last five or six years, that's really been my battle. Which is like, how how do I? And I and it's weird because like even even when I think even when you crush it, like for this is just me, kind of reflecting. Like even when I'm doing really good at it, when I'm putting in the hours, the business is growing, the business is doing well, and. I feel like I'm around, I'm seeing my son every day, I'm spending time, we're doing the fun games, all these things. Even when I'm crushing it, there's always that voice in my head that's like, man, you are lazy, you're not doing enough. Like, it's this fucking, Bro, it's like this never-ending chatter, You are preaching dude. to the choir, my brother. Dude, my it, never God. Sh- it never shuts all off. All the time. And it's like, there's these brief moments of reprieve, like very brief, where I'll be like, nice job, Leon. You know what? Look at the last couple of years, you've done a lot. You, you, you yep. know, let, 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 don't compare yourself to other people, like be proud of yourself for a second. And I'll have this like 30 seconds of bliss. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then it's right back to just being miserably Dude. anxious that like everything I built is going to die. I'm not around. Like I, it's, it's just, yep. and, and My I, next and video then the is people I talk tank. to, yeah. yeah and, and a lot of the, and you probably are, as I'm saying this, you're probably relating to a lot of what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Oh, yeah. You're like, you could be me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and even talking, like when I talked to Zach last week, who's the, he's the, he's the CEO of Meta PCs. Yeah, I know Zach. A lot of these entrepreneur types, this is, this is kind of this perpetual mindset that it's, it's like a double-edged sword because it plagues you, but it's also what drives you because yep. you never feel like you're good enough. There's this, I don't want to say it's like, it's partly insecurity it's partly um I, i'm not even sure the word for it but uh so it it's it can be i guess perceived as a good thing because it's this anxiety that forces you to get up every day and do these things even yeah. when you're feeling all this pressure and this ang- and this kind of anxiousness around it but the other side of it is like there's just this baseline level of uh discontent yep. in this uh, unsettled feeling that never really goes away dude I, I like for me it's like the end of my day i have like this checklist it's like did i stream today check did i work on something for youtube content check <laughs> did i yeah. see my family for a few hours today check did i work out today did i lift check right if i can't check all four of those boxes like i am a fucking turd <laughs> like, yeah, right. exactly. what an absolute loser dude, I am fu- i'm such a, like uh i don't know if you feel this way but like so every year we go uh my whole the whole family like my mom my stepdad uh i have i have four siblings uh two two stepsisters and then like my my other two siblings are like my bio brother and sister um we all with a significant others our kids everything we all go to cape cod every year for a week love it right like nice quiet ever we get this big old house like that sleeps 15 people like beautiful we all get Falmouth like area or where you go uh we go we go uh orleans okay yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah yeah like on the on the on the bay side you know water's nice and calm and all that you know yes. use it like skagit beach you ever been to skagit yeah yeah, yeah sure yeah. love skagit dude it's awesome uh but we That's every awesome. every year we go there for a week like the whole family and I get anxious as a motherfucker when we go because I'm like, Vacations. all my viewers are gone <laughs> by the time I get home, you know, like, mm-hmm. and then it's like, uh, you know, and, and for the first few years when I was doing this for a living, I would bring 
like a setup with me and I would like take two days, like four hours, like for two days while we were gone. And I would stream like from the, the beach house. Like I had like this yeah. whole like little sub fucking like setup. And I don't, I don't do that shit anymore. Cause like, I just can't be bothered, you know, but in the, in the <laughs> good, early, good, good. Yeah. In the early days I was just like, it, like the anxiety would just get to me. It's like, yeah, some fucking 22 year old guy that like lives in a studio apartment and doesn't have a girlfriend is just going to stream like for 16 hours. and going to take all my viewers from me. Like I would just <laughs> freak the fuck in out. One vacation. I'm going to come home yeah. and they're all going to be yeah, stolen but, by yeah, this I'm gonna dude. Lose half my viewers. Hour stream. Yeah. yeah. But ha half my viewers <laughs> are going to be gone when I get home, you know, like, like yeah. And, but that's the shit that like, you know, fucking streamers and YouTubers and shit like that's what we go through. You know, if I don't put up a video at least once a week, like the algorithm is going to fuck me, you know, like, yes, it's, it's uh it's a disease. That's <laughs> what it is. And it's like, but now it's, it's like I said, it's gotten better. You know, yeah. like I'm in recovery. <laughs> uh, it's the nature of the business yeah. too. I mean, you know, I, I look at it as just, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, um, one of the side effects, one of the negative side effects of, you know, living an incredible life uh, on yeah. paper, on the service. Yeah. Like the flip side of that is just an unyielding gratitude for like all of the perks that come along with being able to, you know, make your own schedule, even though I just talked, you know. So even all, even though all those feelings exist and you feel like you're always working, it's like I, you know, I spent 15 years having to decide which holiday I wanted off to spend with my family because yeah. I had to work or bartend in the restaurant. Yeah. Did I want to spend Christmas Eve with them or did I want to spend Thanksgiving? I had to choose. And like, so those are all the things I make sure when I'm feeling stressed and I'm feeling all these like emotions around whatever I do, it's like, man, you, you're allowed to feel those things. It's okay. Certainly don't ever complain about it publicly. Or on Twitter or online right. because you're really in a privileged position to be able I to do this. I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. And so, but there is this weird thing with content creators that I see, um, you know, like what we can talk about this and certainly we're, we're talking publicly and this will be on the internet for people to see, yeah. but like we can relate to each other because we, we do the same thing in a lot of, in a lot of ways and we feel a lot of those same pressures. Yeah. But if you're somebody who makes a living online, a good living at that, doing what we do, you cannot possibly complain on the internet and expect somebody miserable at their job working nine to five, whatever, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to feel bad for you. You can't, yeah. you can't. No. And I see so many creators, like they go through it and they turn to their audience for like consolement because they like, yeah. they want their audience to feel bad for them because they're so stressed out because all these things, it's like, bitch, Tell your therapist or your friends that make content because your viewers do not give a single shit. Yeah, I don't know. and that's and, and it, dude the hypocrisy in that too because a lot of the a lot of the content creators it's like somebody comes in and they talk about like how their life is shit and, and like yeah. the creator will start bitching on fucking Twitter about how somebody was trauma dumping on them. And then, and then you're like the same motherfucker is turning around being like, so I'm depressed. And like, you yeah. know, like there's nothing wrong with talking about how your you mental guys health don't know is how in... draining it is to go live yeah, yeah. this many hours a week. I just yeah, don't yeah. have any energy for my family. It's like, that may be true. Keep that shit. To yourself, that is such bro. a fucking entitlement mentality. Like that, <laughs> yeah. that, and like the people that are like, you expect me to work 40 hours a week for how much money? And I'm supposed to pay these bills. And it's like, <laughs> those are my favorite. Yeah. Like, talks. Yeah. yeah. Congr like you made it out of college. You're officially an adult now. Welcome to the world that we've Welcome all lived in for a very world. long time. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm really sorry that you're going through this mental health crisis of realizing what it's like to have to be like a working stiff, but yeah, that's yeah. what you are now. You're welcome. That's literally what being an adult is. Yeah. It's fun. There are Every no more milestones. Weeks, You'll get married one day. That's the last one. That's it. <laughs> Every couple of weeks I'll see, it's like t typically like a TikTok repost that goes viral on X because every buddy on X is like dunking on this person, like being like, welcome to the real world, bitch. And then there's just, <laughs> and then, and then it's like this argument in the replies of like, well, you know, it's, it's not what it's like, you know, it's not what it's like when our parents were kids, you know, they all, they all had, could buy a house. And maybe you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, maybe there's some truth to that, but like everyone acts like we're in the most miserable age all of a sudden. It's like, bitch, you think, you think my grand, like my grandparents that lived through the great depression were like way better off than you are yeah. graduating from college and having trouble finding a job. Like My what? grandfather worked dawn to dark from when he was 16 years old <laughs> until he was like 80. I you mean, know, like I'm, um, and he preached at two churches on Sunday, like literally preached at two churches on Sunday. The man only worked like he would cut out like self-employed. He would cut out for like basketball games or like family events, whatever. Family always came first, no matter what. 
but he would like the, the event would go over and he would get back home. And if it was daylight outside, he'd change back into his work clothes and go back to work. Cause like, he had shit to do, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, and then, you know, my, my favorite argument when people present it is also, uh, uh, it's weird that people put as much value in like a hard day's work as they do. Like you think working a lot of hours is something to be proud of. And it's not so much the hours, but it like the effort, regardless of what it is that you're doing. I've always looked at it mm -hmm. like people that really put in the effort are people that should be celebrated regardless of what it is that they do for a living, you know? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, and I always like kind of balk to people like, why are you proud of working 60 hours a week? Well, it's, you know, well, when I, when I was doing that, like in other professions, it was because I, I had money to earn and I was a driven person and I had my own business and that's how I Yeah, you had a bills. goal, you had a purpose. Yeah, I had like shit to do. Yeah, I'm providing for a family and yeah. doing these things. Yeah, I had motivators. Like, my why was big enough. <laughs> you that's know? right. You, you Your why and your purpose. Like, the, what's the alternative? Like, spending your whole life trying to figure out how to do the least amount of work possible? Like, yeah. that, I'm, that's I'm, such a weird... It would be it's great. A weird mindset to me. That would be great to work 30 hours a week and make the amount of money that I was making when I was working 60, but I hadn't earned that yet, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred so. percent. You can't, I, you can't expect to like, and this, I think the, where the ruse is up for a lot of people is they're, you know, they're unfortunately told that like, Hey, if you go to school, you get good grades, you go to a nice college, you go into a bunch <laughs> of debt, yeah. maybe you get a scholarship and you get this really nice fancy piece of paper that says you're smart. Yep. It's easy mode, baby. You're going to be able to buy a home and all oh, this. Yeah. It's like, motherfucker, the landscape has changed. Like, there's going to be people that didn't go to college that have already, they're already four to five years ahead of you because they're busting their ass building businesses online yeah. or doing whatever the fuck. So, like, it, it is a, you know, it's tough. You know, I, I feel bad for some people because they're just raised in these ecosystems where this is what they're led to believe. Yeah. And then they finally leave this kind of structured system that has been sold to them as the end all be all yeah. of how you become some sort of successful adult a little sheltered and they get slapped in the fucking face <laughs> by the reality of life. <laughs> and it, it does not feel good. Yeah, You have to it, figure out what a budget is now. Yeah, Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? You're in $200,000 of debt and no one really gives a singular shit about your cool degree. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. No one cares. Yeah. You have an <laughs> MBA. All that's care. neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So does everybody else. But this person is five years experience and yeah. it's like well how am i supposed to get a job with no experience it's like i don't know work for free for three years and like what what what, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking cruel world listen man yeah, it's a, it, it is it's a fucking dog eat dog world yeah and it's uh, i don't know like meanwhile their neighbor saying, didn't go to college and decided he was going to go work at the mom and pop mechanic shop and now he's going to inherit the business and he's making you know three four grand a week Right, hundred percent. Started mowing lawns when he was sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Has a fucking crew of fifteen guys now and makes seven figures. Fucking has you know hundred fifty accounts in your neighborhood. Yeah. Like, it, Dude, there's you want to hear a proud uh, dad moment. My yeah. my kid, my my eighteen year old kid. He decided yeah. one morning he was gonna start a, a car detailing business. He was gonna Love like it. squeak cars for a living, like on the on the side. Like he he's you know working at a sub shop or whatever part time, and then sure. he's got like this auto detailing thing. He he like total entrepreneurial mindset like starts posting shit all over Facebook marketplace. He starts taking all of his own money and like buying like better tools and like investing in like his, I'm not telling him to do any of this shit. He's investing wow. in his own business. He's, he's uh, trying to make like, he, he's got like this little Mazda three or whatever that's in, it's a real nice car. Um, he, uh, he, he, he keeps it spotless inside and out. Cause he's like, I got to make sure that like I look presentable for like, you know, people that might want, you know, whatever he's that's right. He's getting like three, four squeak jobs a week. He's making like an extra three, 400 bucks a week. You know, he's, he's 18 years old. He's been doing this since like last summer. He like, this is the first time he actually like started like four, doing push. four figures a month. Just doing yeah, a, like, just couple. like on the side. And it's like, I wasn't making that kind of money when I was like 18 no. years old. Like I didn't dude, have I no wasn't making business. that much money until I was 30 to be honest. I didn't dude. I didn't start <laughs> like, I didn't start acting like an entrepreneurial dude until I was like 25. When I was, if I had been doing shit when I was 18, like I was like, I was like, damn, you know, I just worked for people. I didn't know you could, you know, and like, he uh he's just started off doing his own thing and he's like he's getting like three four extra jobs a week he's um he's got a couple of car dealerships to pull him in for like you know knock out a couple of vans here and there sometimes yeah. if they need him for like extra help um he he's got like these rigs of stuff he like he like he, he dude he went full farm boy and like rigged up like these little systems for like stuff that would like fit in his trunk but he could keep it all organized and like you know pull things out put them back in like it's all i love that like where it needs to be he's nailing it and i was like that's unbelievable i'm like I'm like, that's my kid right there. Hell yeah, dude. That, dude that's a huge, that's such a proud dad moment. <laughs> More, proud dude, that, dad that moment. to me, 
that to me, if like, if we're fast forwarding 10, 12, 13 years in the future with my son, uh, would be so much more gratifying than like, Oh, I got an A in science. Dude, like, same. You know, like, same. okay, cool. Like, uh, cool. I want you to do well in school kind of, but no, that that's a skill that whether or not the squeak job turns into a legitimate business, you can take that skill of seeing a market that needs something and being able to fulfill that need and go and do it. Mm -hmm. You can't like, he's going to, he's going to crank. Yeah, dude. And we're, 18, and we're talking dude, I, I was fucking smoking weed playing smash brothers at 18. Yeah, you kidding me? I was a fucking was a loser. Turd, Thank dude. Christ. I got my shit together sometime in my late twenties. <laughs> credit to maybe my now wife who like kind of put me on the straight and narrow a little bit and I was able to figure something out, but yeah. holy shit. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to be just fine. Oh, he's going to, he's going to do great, dude. <laughs> he, um, he's, he's something else. Like the same, same thing though. Like I don't give, I never cared about grades for me. It's always been about effort, you know? Cause it's yes. like, if you get a C and you can great. tell me that like you worked your ass off, like, I don't care. Like that's, that's yep. I've always been fine with that. Um, effort, attitude, respect. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, like absolutely. He's, things. he's, and he's been great, you know? And like, and now, so he was going, he started school. He was going to be an architect. That's what he wanted to do. And I'm like, nice. okay, you know, like if you want to build buildings, like that's, that's awesome. But he's always been super into cars. And then he came to me uh, two weeks ago and said he was changing his major. He wanted to be a mechanic. And I was like, okay, that's good. Like it. Do it. Like, if that's what you want to do. Like go nuts. And then he, he just, uh, he went and, and got a job working at like a, like an auto detail shop. Uh, like last week he starts like next Monday or something. Um, okay. So he's like diving so all the way into he's it. He's going like, to get a lot of experience there while yeah, he's like still able to do some of these realistic jobs job the skills. Or... He'll have a, he'll have a two year degree in auto mechanics. You know, he'll be able to work any shop he wants because he just shows yep. up with the paper. He'll know exactly what to do. You know what I mean? Like, and then he can go and like specialize in whatever he wants to from there. You know what I mean? I was like, shit, yep. just go like run with it, man. Like, you could go work for a race team. You just got to get the the right paperwork. Like, why not? Man. Like, That's how cool. Awesome. You know? I think a lot about that stuff. You know, my son's five and a half, so we're still in, like, the fun, ha-ha, yeah. play around phase. Yeah. But you said your son's 19, so you're at, like, that, that you know, the teenage years and then these pivotal life yeah. moments of, like, post-high school. And it's weird because, like, I don't feel I like I'm all the way. Like, I know I'm in my 40s, but, I don't, like, doing this for a living, I don't feel like I'm all the way an adult. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just a big, I'm a big yeah. kid, you know? Like, Newsflash. I don't think you ever really do. Yeah. I don't think it matters. Like, no, probably, I know I certainly probably don't. Not. Like, you know, and I'm, and I'm, you know, a lot of guys that I interact with on a daily basis are in the like early to mid twenties. You know, I go to conventions yeah. and stuff like all the time. And, right. and a lot of the people that are like my, my peers, quote unquote, in this business are like 25 to 35. Like they're all just about everybody is younger than me. I mean, shit, hanging out with Dr. Lupo, he's, he's three years younger than I am, four years younger than I am too. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm, and he's like the grandfather. Yeah. And space. everybody, yeah. everybody's like, Oh, you're the dad. And it's like, Oh, yes. I can't really look at him like that. Cause I got him beat, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. but like, uh, you, you, uh, you look around in, in that space and it's, um, like him, him, my son growing up, it's, it's a weird thing to try and coach him into adulthood and be like, yeah, so you got to, you know, budget yourself this way and like pay attention to these things. At some point in the near future, you're going to have to have to like deal with this. Like this is what happens if you get into a car accident because that happened recently and we had to go to <laughs> we had to go to traffic court and like he was nervous about that. And he's like, "Dude, don't even worry about it. You'll be fine." But he wanted yeah. me to go with him, you know? Like so those those kinds of things are like stuff that I wasn't ready for, like the the kid stuff. Like I uh, like I had no idea what I was doing, but it's like, oh, they're a kid. And now it's like I'm trying to coach like another like full grown man how to be a how to be a better man. Stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's different. Yeah. It's cool, but it's 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 weird because I don't like it. Part of me is just like, dude, like last week I was his age. Like it's just it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Know? Literally, you hit like the same thing happened to me. Like you hit early twenties and then you snap your fingers and nope, we're all almost at 40. Yeah. Or 40 and, <laughs> and here we are. I'm playing video games, but now I make money doing it. So not much yeah. has changed. I just somehow was able to make money. Yeah. Doing yeah. It. yeah. That's fucking crazy. Well, so it, it kind of in the same, in the same, uh, you know, sphere of that, you know, the parental guidance, like, what do you, what do you think about, like, when you think about legacy, like looking back, you know, I think about this a lot, just as when I get too wrapped up in the day to day yeah, and I'm like, Oh, this thing, that thing, you know, I'm very intrigued and interested when I see interviews or, or conversations with people that are a little bit older and, yeah. you know, they're talking to younger generation people and they, and they're like, man, 
these, th- I wish I knew when I was your age that all of these things didn't matter. And I listen to them talk about all these things and they're all the things that I'm so focused on worrying about. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> is that just a product of like, you know, I, you know, what do you think like over the next 20, 30 years, as your family grows, you get older, like, what do you want to look back on and be, you know, most proud of? Um, like, you know, what's funny is like, uh, so I, I have like my own like personal, like growth goals for like my health and like wealth and like that kind of stuff, you know, things that you want to achieve, you know, I want a bigger, I want a bigger, nicer, newer house. I don't want a house that was built in the sixties, you know, like, like st- stuff like that, like immediate future kind of shit. But yep. I think, I think, uh, my, so my grandfather is probably like my, uh, my number one, like influence. Uh, he, he like one of your, like your hero, you know what I mean? Like my, sure. my grandfather was like that guy for me. Um, and you know, super conservative dude, not nearly as conservative as I am. I think, you know, he had, he had like that great depression era, like viewpoint about an awful lot of life. Um, because he, he, that's what he grew up in. And like, you know, you understand that in certain, certain aspects, but, um, he was always available for his family and he was, he was a fantastic neighbor. He was a community leader and above all else, he was just kind, like he cared mm-hmm. about people. Um, and he, he grew up and lived in, in the house that uh, he grew up across the dirt road from the house that he was born in and down the hill from the house that he grew up in on the same like 600 acres of land. It was like this, just this fucking deliverance as compound. Right. Um, but anybody was always welcome at his house. He never locked his doors. You could walk right in, sit down at the kitchen table. He would have a conversation with you. Like he was just that dude. And, um, in, in a town of about 5,000 people, uh, 3000 of them showed up to his funeral. Right. So that's, that would like the, the pie in the sky dream for me would be like to, uh, I aspire to be like that type of a person, you know, when I get to be around, you know, whenever my time is, I, that's what I hope that people look at me like, um, would be somebody that well-respected as him. I probably won't ever get there because I think he was a special kind of dude. Um, but it's like, it's one of those where I like, I would love to become that guy, you know? Sounds like he set a high bar. He did. Yeah. He was, <laughs> he was just, he was just a great person. You know? That's, and I miss that's him. beautiful though. I, I love, uh, I love the, being involved in his community, I think, in in just a, being a kind person, I think that 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 is baseline for me, and not just the community piece, but just the ability to be kind and to have empathy. Even yeah. you know, there's there's parts of being a man or an adult that like you need to be stern and strict and uh, uh, and critical, but if you can turn that switch and be kind and empathetic in view other people through the lens of humanity that we're all sharing, you know, this same rock together and we all have our own individual struggles and be able to, to offer that olive branch to people specifically, whether it's in your community and your family, that's such an unbelievable, it's such an unbelievable trait. And I, I do, I, I, I was blessed to have uh, a parents that in a grandfather, same thing. I uh, so blessed. I have a, uh, I come from a family of just unbelievable kindness and empathy. And it's really, you know, it's weird because as I've spent so many years on the internet, uh, there's been a little bit of callousness that's developed in me just because I've ingested so much that has made me. The trolls temper you to start being a sarcastic douchebag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I've always been sarcastic for the sake of comedy and I, and certainly I say things that are critical and that are maybe could be perceived as mean, but at a very core level, um, I really try to view everybody as somebody that deserves, you know, consideration and kindness, whatever that might be. And I think that's something that's really just, I don't know the solution to it, but we've really just lost a lot of that. Uh, in this very kind of I agree, what feels like partisan world that we live in, whether it's politics or singular issues that really divide people, mm-hmm. the internet has really exacerbated those divisions between people that think differently. Dude, so, and how weird th- is it too? Like just because somebody has a different viewpoint on how they should live their own life, that like that they don't people, deserve kind. Yeah, people whatever. people go out of their way just to be a fucking douche, like just a complete asshole to them for no other reason yeah. than just different. Like, regardless of what side of the fence and the aisle, whatever the people are on, like, I don't share some of the social, like, political views of just about every one of those dudes in San Antonio that I absolutely love hanging out with. 
I know that the the majority of them, I have different like socio political views versus like what they think and believe. But I don't give True. a fuck. <laughs> like, cause, it's all right. cause like the, the man that I loved most growing up, my grandfather completely different than I am. And I respected the hell out of him. Like, I, like I would be nothing but a hypocrite if I couldn't like, like adore those dudes and say that I love my grandfather at the same time. It didn't make any damn sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, you, along those lines, you really, you really, it's incredible how like we're, we're all so similar like we all want the same thing yeah. like like to politics aside like we want to feel belonging we want to feel loved yep. we want to have something to wake up in the morning to look forward to yeah like humans are very fundamentally all the same like, yeah. in, in so many ways like the emotional needs that we that we require uh and and for some reason <sighs> It may be profit. Like there's a, there's a million reasons probably why, but we choose, and I say we collectively, we choose media, whatever it is. None of those similarities are ever really in consideration. It's always the things like it's just every headline, every tweet, everything is about the things about us that we can't agree on. I, it's, it's, it's always very the tiring. things about division. It's like, how, yeah, why it's are taxing. we different? How are we different? Like why, like how screwed up are you for being different? Like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And it meanwhile, and I'm just I, like, I, I don't give spend... a shit if you're different. Like I still yeah. like you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like I, I know there's like people on Twitter. Like I, I, there's so many people on Twitter. I would read something and be like, you are a fucking moron. Like I hate this person. I, I would say like, that's my illicit reaction. Like <laughs> well, how could you possibly fucking think that? But I would like, I could sit down in a room with them or on yeah. a call like this on a human level and be like, yeah. let's have a conversation. Like I know that at your core, you just want to love and to be loved and to yeah. have people around you that you care about, to care about your community. And like even people that have these ideals and beliefs that I think are asinine, I try to look at it through the lens of they probably believe those things because they think based on their lived experience in their life, that is what's best for them and the people around them. And the best part about and it is if those topics never came up and you were sitting next to them at a bar drinking a beer, you'd probably think they were fantastic people regardless. You could, right? Yeah, certainly. So that's all, like that's the thing that that like and aside from the fact like there's there's obviously uh, like um, exceptions to every rule. Like there's some. I was going like, to say people can be like really some messed that up. Just totally suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there <laughs> there's are no aspects about it. people that could be like really bad. Like yeah. you know, some people yeah, just my spare time suck. I like to cut people <laughs> up and put them in packages. Like all right, like I don't like you. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> But, you know, aside from like, you know, that kind of shit, uh, yeah, the, the, the ideas, the ideals that people have that, that make us different, I've never seen sense in like just hating on them for it. It never, never. Well, it's, it's, it's very profitable. I yeah, mean, well, that's a good... It can be incredibly profitable. <laughs> Maybe so I that... should start. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I mean, you look at some of these motherfuckers, this is a whole nother rabbit hole. I won't go down, but some of these cats that. You know, they just, you can adopt a personality that is just like, say the flavor of the week, most offensive thing and double down on it every single day, tweet about it, yeah. stream about it. And you now have a following of people that love you because you're fucking no take any shit, yeah. but uh, and you it's speak your mind. and yeah. yeah, and it is what it is. But, uh, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't, doesn't seem like something I would love you. I think that's very, it's very easy to get uh, captured by your audience then. Like, yes. like audience capture is something I think is very, very prescient, you know, with people that really decide to go hardcore in the paint on certain issues. Yes. It's like you are now completely captured by your audience. And if you stray from this ideological path, you will get eviscerated and your whole business model yep. is now the more polarizing, gone. the more powerful the magnet, right? So Yeah. So yeah. So it's it's something, it's something, man. The internet's a crazy place. You and I have uh been in a fortunate position where we've been able to 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 capture an audience in a way that we've been able to do some stuff we love and monetize. And we're yeah. both very blessed. And listen, one peg, I, I so appreciate you taking the time to 
to hop on this podcast and chat a little bit with me. And, you know, we've met a handful of times at range days in PAX East, but this yeah. is certainly the most in-depth we've ever this uh, been was able awesome, to talk. Man. And, I like and talking really to you. You're a good dude, it. man. <laughs> hey, man, this, this is why we do this, because conversations make the world go round. Yeah, it's man. like you can only get so much across in a, a fucking 70 character Twitter soundbite, but yeah, yeah, yeah. sitting down and chatting about life is, is where it's at. This is how you grow. This is how you, you continue to shape and mold your view of the world and, and what informs your day to day. So yeah, thanks, thanks for, for being me. here, man. Tell, tell people uh, where they can find you. Twitch slash one peg. Twitch slash one peg. Uh, one, uh, YouTube slash uh, at one peg. Uh, I'm pretty much pretty much one peg on everything except for Twitter. It's a uh, one peg MG. And how often are you streaming these uh, days? I'm I'm live like every day. Yeah, every day. Yeah, this pretty much pretty much get, every day. You, yeah. I don't. I could never. It's, I don't even know what that yeah, work ethic even looks like. So I, I, I usually start. I've been starting lately at like five and six a.m. And then like I'll do I'll do like six seven. Who the fuck is watching you? Do you have a huge you not like a, dude in a British audience? You wanna, you what want, is going on? Something wild, dude. You want to hear like like how you in how Thailand you, how you capture big up on the one peg? How you get video uh, viewers like on Twitch like like meta bullshit is you okay. start streaming at like five a.m. Eastern, six a.m. Eastern. I average like a hundred more viewers like like concurrent by starting that early because that's like when most streamers aren't on right like. All the overnight DGens, they go to bed. So I get up early and then I start. And then it's like, you know, I get to capture in, their audience from the guys that in the world is your oyster. But on the viewer side, like who the fuck is up at 6 a.m. watching of, streamers? There's a lot of EU guys. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, so and that's then there's what like, it is. You're capturing the EU audience. Yeah. Well, because I'm an older dude, a lot of my audience is like, you know, 20 early plus guys. or whatever. So it's like you, you get sure. like truckers, IT guys that start like super early in the morning or like dudes working overnight shifts. You know, I get a lot of those folks. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I love it. Well, good shit, man. Yeah, check him out. Thanks again for being on, man. And uh, Hi, I look forward to chatting with you soon. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. All right, brother. See you.